All right, we're on the air. Welcome to Land and Under, or as we call it uh, by abbreviations and acronyms, which we will talk about in this episode of Blood. <laughs> uh, we are reviewing, we are a book club who doesn't just do books, we do reviews of uh, all kinds of media, e-comics, e or comics I should say, or graphic novels. We also do TV series, we do um, movies, even sometimes some video games. And this time we are doing the series by Dennis E. Taylor called the Bob of this. Um, we started off with just the first book, which we're going to go do first, as we have had uh, one person who hasn't read Ford, so we're going to definitely cover that off. And then we're going to delve into the rest of the series. The three books in the series, which the first one is We Are Legion, We Are Bob. Second is Matt, help. Uh... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, that bodes well. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just accessing my um, most recent. I know, but we uh, are unique, I think, and the last one is um, all these worlds. All these worlds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and there, um, my opinion. Or we we will share our opinions, which is um, my opinion was it was awesome. So yeah, let's get into. <laughs> it. I, I loved this series so much. It's like everything. I think Mel knew when she said, we, we, we should do this because you'll like this. This is totally up your alley. Um, yeah. It's, dry, it's, it's, um, it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a uh, um, self-deprecating AI. <laughs> you know, uh, just there's good science in here, which I really love. Um, there's, there's just, it's just really great, but there's just fantastic lines. And um I think it spans around about a century. I'll have to check the timelines on this, but the whole series, I think, does about a I century. I would agree with that. It's around about a century. Yeah, around about a century. Over. Um, and because as a von Neumann probe, the Bob who's, uh, or the Bob of the Bobs are the Bob, um, are immortal, uh, it just, uh, a century is like nothing, right? So, uh, yeah, I love this. I very much enjoyed Ray Porter's um, narration on Audible and I completely recommend it. I'll be interested to know those who uh, read the books, what they, you know, read them in print, what they thought, but uh, I love this. Um, I have very little to criticise. I just, it was just, it was a great ride. It was just enough science, just enough humour, um, just enough um, hum um, humorism. I don't know, what, uh, what do you call it, being human? Humorous, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There's like a that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, and tonight I am drinking an Earl Grey martini. So um, lemon juice, Earl Grey gin, simple syrup, egg white, yum. Uh, on the next person I've got is Karina, and then Naomi. Um. So it's been a few months, and my memory is not good with my busy, busy life. But I did really enjoy it. Um, I am the person who did not continue reading or, as it were, listening to the series. And it's not like I may go back and listen to it at some point. It's just I had other things that I wanted to read in the meantime. And, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, as you said, Sarah, I have no criticisms of it. It was really enjoyable. Um, the narrator was fantastic as well. Um, yeah, nothing bad to say. No? Um, I also really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed how the narrator differentiated, different, and the differentiated yeah. that word, between not just other characters but the other bobs. Like, yeah. Because, yeah. because you would think that all of the bobs would have a very similar tone of voice, like they're the same person, as it were, like mm. they're from the same the base structure but he had a different way of speaking for every single bob like every single one of them had their own sort of lilts or accent or mm. like every like and it was so it made it really enjoyable to listen to like it didn't for a book that I have started reading while we were in between reading the three of them that it has a male and female narrator and I've found that after read, after listening to all three of these books, the narrator was so good going to this woman who sounds like a cross between um, OK Google and Siri uh, was just <laughs> really like, <laughs> you triggered your phone. I did trigger my phone. <laughs> it was just very jarring having that sort of very just flat voice 
and it was so enjoyable having that voice to tell me this story that was there was enough science in it to like make sense but it wasn't so much science that I was like what is I don't I don't understand mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it was sciencey enough where I could understand what was going on mm -hmm. even though what was going on was fairly high tech without being you know sort of like you have to be a smarty smart person to enjoy this with all their smarty smart engineering and yeah. computery stuff like <laughs> it, it, was, it was yeah it was really good um I enjoyed how they developed all of the characters throughout all the stories and sort of the how they sort of gave you views into different worlds of you know what Bob was doing and then what Bill was doing and what the humans were doing and then more and more sort of Bob's as they sort of came into light and sort of how they were discovering the universe. Awesome. Sorry, I was still talking. No, that was no, much that better was, than what I had. <laughs> that, that was great. Uh, Matt, you're next up in my view. Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I really enjoyed things. Uh, uh, what? What was that? Ben, everyone can hear you, dude. He's <laughs> <laughs> talking to the dots in the game. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so please uh, continue like you didn't hear him. I, uh, I read all three uh, and I did read them. Uh, I read them on Kindle, so I have not an audio experience for this one. It's all written word. Uh, yeah, very much up my alley. Um, I you know, Lots of pop culture references. Um, I'm sure we'll talk in more detail, um, but uh, just, yeah, generally really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm just looking forward to talking about it more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, also, I'm also having a drink. I'm, yeah. Um, Cheers uh, to you. An, an Imperial and, and Coffee and Stout. Cheers. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> Seems appropriate. <laughs> it does. Beers, coffees. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. thinking that very when you said the martini before, I was like, if it was a coffee martini, it would go down very well. Well, <laughs> uh, spoiler, Bridget and um, Howard, we were enjoying martinis at the end. I was like, ooh, you guys are good taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I started listening to this because it which it showed up as a um sort of laser book and i think i might have been one of the first i don't know if now was before me but i think i was one of the first that started listening to it um you beat me listening and, and to I it was, but i beat you with wanting to read it <laughs> yeah maybe maybe i saw you like it or something on Goodreads. yeah i think you did and that made me look into it but then i was like you know i was looking for a new audio book and i went yeah i'll give this a go and i was like at the end of the first audio book, I need the next one right away. And I meant like right away, like I downloaded it and listened to it, started listening to it straight away. And it was one of those ones where like, you can tell that I really, really like an audio book if I make excuses to listen to it when I'm not in the car. So yeah. Um, oh, like well, let's be, do some dishes. Yeah, well, I, I usually I can't do it when I'm, when the kids are awake and I'm, otherwise yeah. I can't hear when they're trying to murder each other. but. Um, <laughs> but like after the kids have gone to bed, if I'm like, well, instead of watching TV or doing something else, I'll sit down and listen to a video book and do crochet or something. Then I know it's a really good audio book. So yeah, I listened to them all in a row. Like I just downloaded one after the other. I think actually after I downloaded the first one, I downloaded another one. Um, and it cost me lots in Audible credits that time because I because they're quite short and I listened to them really fast. So. Um, yeah, that sort of shows you how much I enjoyed them. I just really, really, it's something, I, I can't even really put my finger on it. Like, I, it just clicked for me. I don't know whether it was Bob himself, the character, or the narrator, or the story, but I think it was probably a bit of everything. Um, and, and I agree about there was enough science that I was like, ooh, that's cool science stuff that I know about, but not enough that it was like, okay, it's getting bogged down in the details. So... Yep, and again, I'm sure we'll go into more detail, but I really liked this series. Probably one of my favourite reads this year so far. Mm. Mel, you're last. Oh, oh and but, but not and also, I am. I am also drinking um, gin with cherry bitters and chambord, which sounds amazing. By the way, you have to make that. Okay. Um, there's not much for me to say that wasn't already said. I think the 
consensus is very strong here. <laughs> it was a good book, good series. Um, I would say that I, if I was recommending this to someone, I'd be like, if you can tolerate audiobooks, it's the way to do it because I think that there's a harmonious blend in this book that goes extremely well in that respect mm -hmm. for this series. Um, but other than that, um, I, I don't have much to add. <laughs> um, I think... Um, I I will have some complaints. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. But for a book that featured so very few females, I did very well. <laughs> that, yeah, I was a bit worried about that. I, I've actually made notes about that. Yeah. I made a note um, on that. So, yeah. Um, so I want to take you all back to the beginning of this book. I want to talk about Vegas, which is where it starts. At a convention, mm -hmm. um, it starts. Actually, it starts before the convention. It starts with Bob yeah. selling his frozen yeah. head. Wasn't his frozen head when he sold it? Man, man, I'm doing my best, Christine. <laughs> <It's> so loud. <laughs> I'm doing my best, Christine. There, man, man, man. 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 very. We can all hear you really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> We're We're like the the biological gods. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to kind of just jump back. I'm, I'm trying to sort of um, frame things, especially because for a lot of people, or a lot of people, some of the people in this uh, in this hangout, it was a while ago since they read the books, uh, especially book one. So I want to kind of um, mm -hmm. set the set the scene. So in book one, we start off with Bob selling his head um, for whatever reason, mainly because he has. A shit ton of money now he sold his business um and then he heads off to a convention he's at a uh panel which is referred to throughout the series um edward guypers and someone else who i think are fictional but matt you might have to let me know i'm pretty sure that i had looked them up and i couldn't find them being I, real I don't, I don't think they were real no yeah um and that was talking about um, alien lives and um, out there, alien life out there and von Norman probes. Um, he meets up with his ex-employees who have also done very well because they have equity. Some of them are judging him for um, deciding to freeze his brain. Um, he's struggling with a breakup. And um, then following that, he ends up getting hit by a car while trying to cross the road legally because the car was avoiding people who were crossing illegally. Any thoughts about a live Bob? Because the thing that struck me is that when we meet him again, because he is restored from a backup, and he's restored from a backup again, um, it's not really, he's not really Bob. So mm. is there anything that we felt from that particular, the, you know, really Bob version one or Bob A that we felt was interesting. I thought what was very interesting and I realized, didn't realize till later is that Bob is only supposed to be 29 and I don't feel that way about the character at all or any of the Bobs in the, in the Bobiverse. To me, also having, if you've created a company that has gotten that far mm -hmm. and the way he reflects on life, he really strikes me as someone who's in his late 30s, early 40s. Mm -hmm. um, and when I cast him in my head or try and think about it or visualize it, that's always where he's at. So um, any thoughts on, on that sequence, on the Vegas sequence, on um, how that affected when he wakes up with Landers? I don't think I realized he was meant to be 29. And as someone who is almost 29, um, yeah, no. Yeah, no, I didn't, so I didn't get that from him. I kind of thought he was close to my age. And I'm 38, so yeah. yeah, I would have thought you know. he was sort of be like the way he sort of mid late thirties. Yeah, mid late thirties, the way yeah. he sort of put himself in the world. Like I would have, mm. I definitely pictured him slightly younger than myself, but not by much. Yeah, and all these all these pop cultural references were of a uh, yeah. time that fit with that sort of mid God, mid, maybe, mid to late thirties. Maybe I must heard him saying maybe Ray said 39 and I heard 29. I honestly no, I don't, don't recall. Remember. Yeah, I don't remember it being discussed at all. So, yeah. See, this is I one think of those things that... It's later on in the series where he's got a... He's got a um, oh, I've had too much gin. Um, he's got a um, body. Oh, 
and yes. you're talking about when how he, old the body is being phased out. Oh yes, I remember that because he was at he was out with Bridget, and the people were like, "Look at him funny." Yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, so I'm just are we saying, are we okay? To move into oh, sorry, take it back. By the way, he was 31. Yeah. He was 31 when he died, but I still think he was a lot older than. Like, I don't think you get to be, you get to build a company up to that level and sell it off and all that. I I don't know. It's just he just struck me as a lot older, and maybe it's also because Dennis e. Taylor himself is, you know, in his 40s and 50s that comes across. Mm. Hey, Mark sure. Zuckerberg. Well, yeah, but, but I don't know. He didn't seem as um, likely to do evil. <laughs> I think that's, that's one of the things that I learnt well from the, listening to The Martian versus mm. what they actually chose to project in the movie and stuff in that I feel like um, it's not just what they actually, the details they tell you in the story, but it is the voice actor who affects how you view the character. That's true. Mm. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Sorry. I couldn't help <laughs> um, so mm. let's let's jump forward a little bit. And we he finds himself. I I, I just want to do a little shout out that the death of Bob is very well done when he talks mm-hmm. about hearing voices and unimaginable pain and uh, just sensing that things were ending, which I thought was handled really well. Mm. And then when he snaps back to consciousness and him kind of trying to feel his way around, I thought it was really interesting as well. Mm. Um, I thought the, uh, what I said here was uh, I made some notes that Landis says you're a computer program that thinks it's Robert. You are a replicant, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. And the other thing that we learned through Landers is, um, and I want to discuss this a little bit, which is Andrew Handel of Handeltown, Ahern, Faith. Now we get mm. into the whole, uh, the acronyms. <laughs> the which I think is one of the, one of the few things that suffered for listening to the audio book. Because Before we go too far, sorry, just going back and talking about how, um, how Bob isn't really original Bob, I feel like, Bob is the most like original Bob because he feels like he is. Mm. Like every other replicant wakes up, checks the serial number and goes, oh, I'm not original Bob. And they mm. let themselves not be original Bob. Mm. Whereas That's a good point, Bob, though, when mm. he came back from a backup, he was like, well, I'm still me. So yeah. I yeah. still follow the yeah. me of it. I Do you know that that freedom and that thinking too? I didn't think about that, Naomi, but that's a really good point that – I'm not original Bob. I am free to then tap into those bits of myself that I'm the really same feeling with, like um, Yeah. Mm. Was it Shark? Who? No, it wasn't Shark. It was one of the one of oh, the, the, guys the that, Aussie guy on the boat. Henry. Henry. So, no, no. The one of the Bobs that oh, later Bobs in book three who lost his ship and then came back and he was oh the like, one who got he, attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. He was like he was still him, still going by the same name, yeah. even though he came mm. back for a backup because he was like that is my identity. Yeah. Even dark, wasn't it? No, uh, was it dark? I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure either. But that's interesting because he looked at himself. He says, "I've been restored from a backup, but I'm I'm not. There's nobody else, so I need to." Yeah, I think that's a really good point because that was actually we we're actually launching into one of the questions I had, which is. When you are restored from a backup and Bob himself, you know, Bob version one, two, what do you want to call it, was, um, wasn't he exploded or something and then they restored him from a backup? So he wasn't even when he went into the heaven vessel, he yeah. wasn't yeah. even the first Bob. He, no, actually, yeah. he was restored from a backup. So he was essentially, you know, a copy. And I thought, mm. I wondered, and I wanted to discuss this with you guys, were there changes did we perceive anything? I don't know. I'm sure Dennis e. Taylor went over and thought about this very hard, whether he should put things in place. Did we perceive anything? Well, I think I that it, it's exactly what Naomi was saying and mm. it comes back to what the rep, the version of Bob thought at the time. And as he was thinking of himself as Bob, he continued to act as if he was Bob. Mm. But once he sort of accepted that change, he started to see himself differently and allowed 
A, allowed himself to explore other things, but also his experiences immediately started to make the changes too because he now started to do different things. Mm. Mm. I also think there was a little bit of a science-y explanation here too where there was like copy errors. You know, like if you take a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, you know, the first copy is going to be the closest to the original. And the more times you copy a copy, so you might find the bobs that were copies of original bob are closer to that bob. But then when they copied themselves, those ones were diverting even more. And then when those bobs but copied themselves. Um, even so, yeah. the two out of the first um, oh, cohort. Bobs, cohort were like yeah. very, very different from yeah, bobs. That's like, yeah. Like, but they I were saying down Mario, and what was ironic is Mario was the one who found the others. He was the most antisocial, and he found mm. the most antisocial race of beings, which I thought was yeah. Really ironic. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't know if there's so much antisocial. They're very social within their own race. Like the others are very. Oh, well, they're social. They like me. Pipeline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like they need to be together. Yeah. You're right. That was a poor choice of words. I, they're, they're not. They they're just, not antisocial. Their um, their like, social structure is different. Cool. I was going to say they're treatment of they're other like people. xenophobic instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Sorry. I take that back. I just. I think it was yeah, just. We, I know what you meant. Be, yeah. On he was like, I don't want to have anything to do with anybody, and I don't want to have anything to do with humans, and you all suck. And oh, now I feel I do need to save everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we're jumping um, ahead because that's book two. Oh, can, I, can I talk about <laughs> copying for a second? Oh. Yeah, yeah, listen, Matt. Book one ends, but I can't oh, remember I where book two ends. Okay, I can tell you exactly where book one ends. So yeah, I know where book out. Yeah, I know where book one ends. I'm, but not everybody good. does. So I just want to remind everyone: book one ends when Howard arrives in. I think it's Epsilon Aridani. There's so many Aridani systems. Maybe it's yeah. Epsilon Aridani. It's, it's, it's Vulcan and Romulus. Vulcan. That's and it's, yeah, and it's also, yeah, it's when they got the people on Earth off Earth, right? Yeah, the first, the first lot. lot. That was the end, was when they first were able to get the people off Earth. Yeah. Yeah, because they were yeah. like, and now yeah. we're going to have Vulcans. Yeah, which yeah. is awesome. And Romulans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, it's twin planets as well, for... would you call them? <laughs> so uh, on the, on the whole yeah. copying okay. thing, um, I almost felt that he'd put a little bit of pseudo sciencey stuff in there to make it interesting um, because the copy of a copy of a copy thing only happens in analog copies mm. or where you use a, a compression algorithm mm. uh, and the, normally a digital copy is a straight digital copy. It's, it's mm. identical um, and modern copying um, tools uh, have all kinds of um, ways of checking to ensure that it is actually a perfect copy. Mm. Um, so that was part of the thing that I struggled with initially and I just had to sort of accept because when you take a copy nowadays, we do it all the time at work, you know, you do a snapshot of a server yeah. and, it's a, and it's a perfect copy. You can just like load back up and it's, it's, not, a, it's not an issue. Um, mm. And if the copy goes wrong, you know, you know that there's a problem and something's happened. Um, but that would be very boring for the story because having identical co identical copies means just the same version of Bob running around. Um, and then the personality only diverges through experience rather than what you have in the book, which is some sort of random mm. um, mutation almost mm. to sort of set them off immediately on a different personality tangent. Well, my, right. guess, so, my guess is from a science point of view, you're dealing with... Yes, it's a digital copy, but it's a digital copy of a human, which is not a perfect thing. Like there are no, yeah. but because yeah. he is a copy of a person, he's now mm. digital. You can mm. freeze that at any point in time for the copy. So you, you just said it. that you just said yeah. that if you compress it, it can it can have that effect. Yeah. I, and I would it imagine depends. that maybe Press. maybe they do have to compress it because yeah. imagine how much computing space that. A person would take up, so maybe they do compress it when they when they when they save it and down. Yeah. You know, well, they need to get a better compression to. algorithm. The yeah. problem might be not so much how they store it, but it might be how it's transferred from like Bob Heaven One to the other Heaven vessels. Like you have to transmit that, and it's not like you're plugging in directly with yeah. people. Yeah. Like you're transmitting that wirelessly. Some of that data. Yeah. 
get corrupted slightly yeah. or changed yeah. slightly and that would be where things can differentiate. Oh, and they were also But even go back to the world that we're in. So one, Bob was frozen at a time where they didn't know what they were going to do with, like he, his head was frozen and then being able to pull that out of his head, whatever. Um, yeah. But it was also in a space race type of time. So my guess is, Matt, is that there was compression and shortcuts, as we heard was happening with the heaven vessels, mm. was happening with the replication as well yeah. and with how the backup um, uh, the backup algorithms and software were supposed to work. I am sure that it wasn't quite, you know, it wasn't seamless and perfect. I still think it was, it's, it's, it was right. it's just the plot yeah, rather the plot. than being yeah. accurate. Mm. Yeah, well, I suppose it's hard with sci fi too. Yeah. So, look, Medeiros doesn't seem to have the same problem. But yeah, we should think Medeiros seems to be perfect copies of, yeah, he seems um, to act the same the, way, whereas Bob didn't. People were Medeiros. Mm. We only, we didn't hear all of them speak. Mm. And it was, yeah. fair, it was like pointed out that they were all like, they were all flown out from Earth, they may not all be Nibiros. They may be other, like, they may have just decided, well, we'll send out this many Nibiros. Oh, we, we want to send out more, but we don't have, like, we don't, we've sent out the last copy or whatever of him or we don't have a backup that's good. We'll yeah. just take another army person. Like, mm, possibly. Although I get the impression that they had trouble finding people that didn't, completely lose their yeah. minds. In the yeah. peak of war though, they may have just like they may have just like forced someone into it. Like it that's may not have sense. that's the sense I got with not Medeiros but the guy that they met in Seoul Henry? when Riker came back is mm. that he got like you're a military person, whether you like it or not, this is your new pro you know, you're mm. gonna die and then you're gonna be uploaded. <laughs> yeah. I certainly got that sense. That he wasn't volunteered he was volunteered for the job yeah. mm. anyway i didn't want to derail the conversation talking about mm-hmm. copying <laughs> well no but i don't just think one you of those things. derail it because i think it's an important it's it's key to the plot lines matt which is oh it is but what i'm saying is no one no one other than the guys who work in our servers and storage area at work doing you know backups of servers every day would even think or care about that but i work you know in it mean? And I think and care about it, but I can understand how, as you said, it can happen in compression. Yeah, but then you have checksums and things that check that that compression actually worked mm. and then go, oh, something went wrong because I know these keys aren't matching up, that kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Okay. It's just Let- in service of the plot and that's that's <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Well yes, you can imagine if, if there was How no variation was on just... the bulbs. Well that's it. The story. I think I was worried when he I was like, what's I didn't initially I didn't want him to replicate because I was like, how is this gonna work where it's just mm. Bob talking to other people like him? And then once we met the first cohort, I was like, Oh, this is fine. This yeah. is interesting, right? Yeah. I was just relieved that they didn't name all of them Bob. Because I was yes. like, oh, yeah. this is going to be a weird. nightmare. So when they all chose different Bob names number. for each other, I was like, oh, thank <laughs> God. Yeah. Because yeah. I would never have remembered if they were Bob 1, Bob 2, Bob 3. I would have been like, which one is Bob 3 again? Even even though if they, they had to have a name, serial number. I still can yeah, do Because remember Guppy, and I want to talk about Guppy. Oh, he like, yeah, yeah. not refer to the Bobs by their chosen names. He only refers to them by serial numbers yeah. or by their Heaven 2 vessel names or Heaven, sorry, not Heaven 2, their Heaven number names. HMI or something or other. Heaven 10, yeah. heaven 12, heaven 22, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so just quickly to go back with the whole thing that um, is, I actually wrote a note on this, is that this scorched earth policy that the Brazilians seem to have invoked this, I don't know, and I think it's it probably along the same lines of this discussion of Andrew Handel setting up, you know, Handel Tanner's religious views and, chucking everything out. I may have, we may have all have said in the past this can't happen, but living under what we're living under now, I'm not sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so how did everyone feel when they heard Landers talk about what happened in the past? I'm feeling very apparous for what's going on at the moment. Mm-hmm. I was like, 
Oh my god, this feels way too real. It does. Yeah. And, and oh yeah. When was the first one written? Because it must have. It's got to have been written. Uh, I didn't was. check that. Actually, I think I might have checked it at the time, but I don't remember now. Where is the publication date in this book? That's not useful. Uh, dun, 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 dun. 2016, September 20, 2016. So very new. Very new. Wow, the third book must have been fairly recent. Yeah. Maybe so he had when, when was when was Trump put into office? Yes, that's what we were on. 20, at the same time. 2016. Yeah. He won the election. 2016. He was a, um, made pri- president in 2017. Right. But saying that, like Dennis Taylor must have been working on this for a while. You know, he he. I don't out. think it's about Trump. It's about the fact that religious views are extremely strong mm. and aggravated mm. at the moment in U- the US and here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, and I, so regardless, <laughs> what about it about the Trump factor is more about the way things are going in terms of politics in America. Yeah, because Trump only got where he was he is because of yes. yeah, that. Because of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point, Mel. And, I mean, really, it's been going on long enough that, like, Handmaid's Tale has the yeah. same kind of thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's these ultra religious people taking over America, and it's and that, so it's not a new idea. No. Um, yeah. No, I didn't say it was a new idea. It's just it was mm. more how kind of close to home it feels right oh, now. But I felt the same when I read The Handmaid's Tale. I was like, oh god, I, this is this is terrifying because it's I can see it happening. Yeah. You know. Mm. Um. So, co- the word corpsicles. I just want to check if that's a real word. <laughs> If it isn't, it is now. It is now. <laughs> no corpsicles were declared. I'm like, that's a real am, word? Am <laughs> I the only person that when he talked first talked about freezing his head that was thinking about Futurama? And like all the, you know how in Free Futurama they have all these preserved heads? In yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was mm-hmm. about a Matt Ruff book called Banking the Monkey, which is where they freeze heads and they, work in, <laughs> they actually work that place. <laughs> Spanking the monkey. Yeah, Thank nothing you. to do with the actual spanking of the monkey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I sound like Homer, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it was a Matt, book by Matt Ruff and it's like half of it's set in one of those facilities, so it's very interesting. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask was uh, for those who listened to the audiobook, who did listen to the audiobook? I know Kirsten did. I don't know if Mel did. You two did. Mel, uh, Karina, and oh, excellent. Sorry, no, Mel. This everyone doesn't just me. But I want to talk just quickly about the accents, the minister's accents, like the faith accents, um, were so freaking good. <laughs> Those kind of Bible basher accents that Ray Porter did, you know. Yeah. Um, like there's Cranston who I just is fucking br- like he was like, you replicant. Like I can just see it, you know. Like, oh, yeah. Like he's got a Bible in his hand. Oh, and he's just- he <laughs> I reckon... I reckon that, that he must have, like, actually picked actual Bible bashes from the TV or something and yeah. just, like, channeled them when he was doing it. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. But then there was the, the and this is something quickly I want to cover, is that in when Bob is working as a, well, he's not in a heaven vessel yet and he doesn't have VR, but he's working within the setup that Landis sets up for him. He's working with his Romas. Um, he can't understand people unless they've been trained to talk to him. Do you think he just put that imperative in towards the future when he was working with, so when Howard was working with Bridget and um, Butterworth and all of that, that they just kind of adapted it? Or do you think that's something that Faith put in place, this kind of weird way of talking? Yeah, I think it was a Faith thing. You think it was a Faith thing? You know, like going back to maybe they sort of kind of go back to more of a Bible. Yeah. Because cool. it was that thing at the beginning with the guy who kind of sounds Norwegian Southern, and he's like, a, "Hey, we are in the place of the Lord, and we are the nine and twenty twenty two. I don't think you guys remember all that, but it was very funny. It was like he had to translate to find out what the hell he said. Um, so I thought that was very interesting, and I just thought the accents generally. And I think uh, did Kirsten t- touch on this? Ray Porter did such a good job differentiating all the vibes. I knew when it was Riker, despite we all, well, yeah, when, true. despite yeah. with them saying it or not, I knew it was Bo- uh, Bill. I knew yeah. it was Bob. 
Um, yeah, you know, it was really good with the audiobook because in a real book, you can flip back to the beginning of the chapter and go, which quad are we talking about again? And you can't do that in an audiobook. So I think he did a really good job of that. I don't think his Australian accent was up to scratch. But maybe I'm <laughs> oh, just oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, That was pretty shocking. That but happens with all Americans, though, that try and do yeah. an Australian accent because they try and do that really like, would you know, that bad. really like, Okay, yeah. Sort of yeah. 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 We don't actually sound like that. No. no. Like they, they think we're all we're all um what's his name who's dead? Who's the guy who's dead? Who has a zoo? Steve Irwin. Rock it all done yet. Steve Irwin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve Irwin. Hunter. Everyone Hunter. says Steve Irwin, you know, like mm. he was like, piss off, mate. And it's like the other, talks like that. <laughs> the other problem is is the Australian ac accent is notoriously known to be one of the most impossible to um yeah. I was actually watching a video about this the other day about why the Australian accent is really hard. And me too. Um, so we probably put it in each other's feed. One of probably because <laughs> I was like, oh, why am I watching this when I'm Aussie? But I was like, quite intrigued to know what. Yeah, yeah me too. Part about our accent, and it was quite interesting. And it also talked about like there being three Australian accents. Like, yeah, there's well, regional most accents. Of us, most of us have the like the sort of everyday person Australian accent and then there's like really Gogan Ocker accent and then there's like the refined Australian accent. Yeah. I mean the Adelaide yeah. accent. <laughs> I think it's more like Kate Blanchett and stuff. I think yeah, they, they use, yeah. they they use Kate Blanchett as the, as the example. They use yeah, Kate Blanchett as the one, example yeah. for the, for the uh, yeah. refined one and they use Hugh Jackman for the ordinary person one and yeah. then they use, I think they use Paul Hogan for the, the Bogan you know, the yeah, Ocker, Ocker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like when he doesn't put it on, like he's still got that, like that's the thing. And I think there's a, there's something else that um, I realised when I was a Kiwi living in Australia, sorry, sidebar, is that you can tell there are regional accents in Australia and I don't think other people outside of Australia and possibly New Zealand get that. They don't yeah. realise that People pronounce things differently depending on where you're on. They elongate things or they shorten things and clip it depending on where they're from. Yeah. And I don't think people realise that. There's also cultural influences. So if you are brought up in a, a Lebanese or a Greek oh, yeah. or a Mediterranean um, immigrant, yeah, immigrant um, community, there are, again, differences in the accent. Yeah. And so people, you know, this isn't understood. <laughs> yeah, well, here. that was the other thing the video touched on was um, an Indigenous Australian accent. Like the, oh, yeah. the Indigenous people speak with a different accent to, you know, the, the When they're speaking accent. English, you mean? Yes, when yes. they're speaking English. Well, obviously, it wouldn't be an accent. If well, I would have thought there's language. also well, no, because there's so many... accents depending on where... In Australia, yeah, yeah, from. yeah, yeah. Exactly. But because but, if you're from Western Australia, you're going to sound different to someone who's from different. NT. Well, it's a completely different language. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. good point, man. <laughs> what do you call the the, the um, you know the place where you put your school bags at school? Locker. Well, cubby. Port, port rack. Mean? Port rack in Queensland. In yeah. Queensland, it's a port rack. But I'm yeah. pretty sure I was like, what the fuck is a port, port rack? rack. Yeah, I'm the sure. rack is different oh, you mean the cloak room? <coughs> oh, the cloak no, room. No, there's no cloak room in in Queensland. We just put shit out in the in the rain. We don't have a, you know, <laughs> the rain comes in at the wrong angle. Well, all the kids but, go, why did you go to my And a Wellingtonian are just sitting here going, it rains or like really like it's cold and wet. Nothing will dry. <laughs> yeah, no. And whereas the like just, it's just like a shelf that's out in the open. It's like a giant bookshelf. It's just yeah. out next to the yeah. classroom and that's but where I mean, go. different to a locker. Like we have lockers in high school which are actually yeah. lockers where you put mm. shit in yeah, and no. uh, yeah. So yeah. they are very different to a port rack. And it's that's different true. again to a yeah. cubby because a cubby is like a little box that is just for you. Whereas port racks are just like yeah. a Yeah. Yeah. What about the the outfit you wear when you're swimming? Yeah. What about what do, what do you wear when you go swimming? Well, I'm from New Zealand, so we call it togs. We call it togs in Queensland, but yeah. I've heard yes, bathers. I, 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 I flip yeah, between see, bathers and swimmers. I say togs yeah. to the kids, and it feels wrong every single time. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not because that's what they're called. They're called togs. You get your swimming togs. You're wearing togs. What are you, you call swimming? Swimmers, bathers. Or you can bathers. 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 Swimmers. 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 Swimm
and we have these different and i probably we could probably think of a bunch of others as well yeah. like um so and then potato oh, scallops matt, and potatoes. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, Matt has a big bug there about potato scallops. I was just going to say, what do you call a deep fried piece of potato that is battered? I call it <laughs> potato cake. Yeah. Potato scallop. Fry I call it a scallop. scallop. I call it. But a it's scallop. not made of a scallop. If I go to a fish and chip shop and ask for a scallop, I want actual seafood. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but the neckline on particular tops isn't made of scallop Scalloping. either. Yeah. It's scallop shaped. Yeah. yeah. Also, and you can like, say, like scallop potatoes on top of like dishes. Scallop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But anyway, sorry. Right. Interesting. Back to back to Bob. It's a, back to, back to Bob. <laughs> Henry, Henry, and we'll get to Henry. Henry had a very typical. Although it got dropped, I did think Ray. He kind of opened up with that true Ocker accent. You know, piss off, mate. Piss off. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it then he got that back, he was it did. like Henry was crazy. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's true. Maybe it, as he as he got less crazy, as he got less crazy, accent, his voice yeah, so the, and his accent yeah. softened yeah. to what an Australian. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the thing that I wondered was why the Australian contingent chose him. Mm. Yeah, he didn't seem like a, like I just don't. He may not have had yeah. much choice. Yeah, like, that's what I'm thinking. Do you think vehement or who, you know, because that was based in India, do you think they had some hand in putting someone who was kind of not suited for the job <laughs> in the replica? Yeah, I'm not no. sure no, but... about him not being suited. I think that it, um, that I think that in a lot of respects, Bob got lucky in that he was yeah. particularly suited because, and what saved him, in my opinion, was the fact that he created a virtual reality for himself. Yeah. So I don't think it's that so much that Henry was not suited. It's that he didn't do what was necessary to keep himself from going insane in the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't have the engineering knowledge. So I, yeah. I get from an, I, I do get from the Australian and New Zealand um, contingent point of view that they went, this man is used to being on his own in great vast mm. space. Mm. That's going to work. But they've deprived him of any way to see. Or, but the, yeah. the problem might be... Like, I don't think that Vehement would have put someone on there that was incapable of the job because they didn't want other replicants out there. They weren't mad that replicants They were too busy existed. bombing. Yeah. They, yeah. they yeah. were mad that their replicant wasn't, like, the, you know, the core replicant because, mm. you know, they stole all their stuff. So yeah. I don't yeah. think it was so much that they wanted someone who was incapable of doing the job out there trying to do it. I think they picked someone that they thought would be able to do it without thinking about how do you keep someone sane for hundreds of years who mm. can't see or do anything in the real world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just probably just didn't occur to them because they were in such a space race, so you're right. Well, yeah. I mean, they, like it didn't even occur to the faith people either. It was only because of the type of person that Bob was. That's right. He created it for himself. Yeah. Like, and he wasn't one of the first. They had actually, the, the Ministry of Truth had tried with so many different types of people and then they well, decided to take a complete left turn. You're right. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, I would out. be interested to know how crazy the Chinese replicant was when the he others got, found, him. found him. Yeah. Like, was he, you know, did he create a VR? What was he, Coco Loco Bananas? Like, yeah. I would be really interested to know in what mental state he was when the others found him. Like, do the others not think much of humans when they first meet them? Because the first human replicant they found was, like, totally off their rocker. Yeah. Yeah. So they just assumed that, that that would be everyone. But Although, actually makes I think kind of sense. like, I don't care as long as you have resources. Yeah, but I do think that makes a lot of sense because they discounted the humans as being... Mm. any kind of an adversary and I think yeah. Naomi, you make right. a lot of sense that if they met the Chinese probe and it was not a it was a rush job and b the replicant was not well equipped mm. with what the job mm. that they were well, supposed I mean, to be doing like, to a known probe then yeah they would have been like you know well it's they they sort of worked out that the others were sort of um guessing that we would that humans in general would do things in the way of um like mm. the magic Chinese numbers yeah. and those sorts of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. Before he became a replicant, like, was he a monk or was he like, was he an engineer? Like, it would be really interesting to know a bit more about who he was. Mm. Like, mm. you know, what kind of what kind of person that they were given an image of to the others to sort of discount. Just so, I um, think it's also interesting because the others are very 
like they're such a hive mind that they they make the assumption that well this is an example of a human so all humans must be like this yeah, yeah. Mono culture. they don't have this yeah. concept of being you know humans are in all these different cultures and individual ideas and they yeah, just they just would have assumed it would have made yeah. sense to them that if this is one human then all humans are like this yeah so yeah it's you interesting notice that um star trek does the exact reverse that every the Borg. basic no that every race that they meet along the way is basically everyone from that race is the same Mm. Oh, yes, you know, yeah, there's with, not with, a lot of with difference. Small exceptions them. generally, Klingons behave like Klingons. Yeah. Romulans yeah. are like Romulans, so it's a Roman at all. We're going to not trust them because they're not trustworthy, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah. but a lot of the time in those sorts of circumstances, the sample size that we meet for mm. our world is a city or a country. Like, mm. and while not all Australians are the same, in a high pressure situation, we might. Acted a similar yeah. like yeah. Similar I, 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 I know jumping ahead, but that's what the PAV did. And yeah. I, I want to pull it back a little bit because we have jumped ahead like three books. But <laughs> the PAV, the PAV were two military cities not far from one another in the same country in the same zone. And I do think that one of the reasons they like behaved the way they they did and they got themselves sorted is because they were thinking all the same way and i did i want actually made a note to talk about that when we get to book two or three is did i'm not i can't remember if it was thor cloud who was it klaus thor no it was um wasn't it jacques who was really jacques protective of the oh uh, yeah it was. i knew it had a norwegian name it was jacques, yeah, it was jacques. um I know why he did it, but I don't know if that's the best thing as far as, you know, um, preserving the race. But I know he was under pressure. But I do think, well, maybe it would have been better to choose them from lots of different places all over the world. But that was just my opinion. Mm. Anyway. But, I mean, how would you feel to, like, wake up and then? Yeah, yeah I think that was why. Well, it was two things. He, he, he wanted that commu- that sense of community in, yeah. and be able to have a community already knew how to work together. Oh, I knew all the reasons. Also, I knew all the reasons, yeah, but also, I, don't, yeah. I don't know whether he's truly preserved the path. No, he probably hasn't. He's no. only preserved yeah. one tiny section of them, but it was exactly. kind of a like... It's like if saying he tried to everybody people from all over the place. Like let's taking, take. He France. wouldn't have had time. He wouldn't. Oh, yeah, exactly. Let's take France. Let's well, take like a small village in France. Leon. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's not even taking yeah. France. It's just like let's just take Leon, and that's yeah. all it yeah. is. And then you're but, missing but, out on so much like, diversity. Human he has such a short amount of time. Yeah. Like if he had tried to take them from different places, he would not have had time. Oh, I totally understand. Um. Okay. Let's get back to book one. Let's talk Guppy. Oh, I love Guppy. <laughs> I, I just, I'm still, I'm still fascinated by the idea that how ocky your accent is determines how sane you are. I think that's a really great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use this in my daily life. Well, <laughs> I think we already do to a degree. That's terrible, guys. Do we, do we... I didn't mean it in general. I just meant that maybe that was how he was trying to portray it in the in the book, like oh no, I think it's a fantastic really idea. Really loud and out there and real, off- yeah, be like stressed with lots of like stuff going on. And then as he got calmer, he was more himself. Yeah, but so then I think I do something similar when I'm upset and and go off. My accent definitely gets far more Aussie. <laughs> I have a particular start, start friend that I used cheese. to drink with that Ben always said that I sounded much more awkward when I was drinking with her. Well, yeah. when I'm drinking, I become very Kiwi. You guys all know that. I drop all my vowels. They all become yous. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm not alone because Anna Paquin says she does the same thing when she's around her sister and she's had a few drinks. Because they're like, you don't sound very Kiwi. She's like, give me a couple of beers. <laughs> Watch well, Netflix. you're in good company then. So there you go. Netflix um, and chill. Sorry, Guppy. Guppy. One. Mm. Uh, another acronym, except in my head, I always put a Y on the end of it. It wasn't until the second listen through that I realised it was yeah. a Y on the end. Ah, I see, just that's where reading that, comes in handy. I yeah, know. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I assumed that it was like just a Y because of the way they were saying it. I mean, yeah. I understand that it's an I, like the, they, they explained it, but like yeah. every time they said it throughout the whole entire book, I was I like, think, yep, that's Guppy, and that's why he's Abra. Yeah, and that's the other reason. Did did anybody else go the like? 
and guppy is a type of fish yeah. Yeah. yeah okay good okay because i was like am I, is this just him being clever or is everyone like on this like understand so the guppy is a type of fish and that's why it's admiral akbar okay cool yeah <laughs> I, 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 I'm not, I don't know if you guys have talked to that when i was gone but i loved the admiral akbar um voice that the, the, the narrator did and i because i started listening to it before matt started reading it i actually played a bit for him and i was like listen to this and he was like it sounds like Admiral Akbar. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like that's oh, yes, actually, that's what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah, it's really good. And I just, I love that even like all of the Bobs, no matter how far away they get like from original Bob, they still have Admiral Akbar. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, he always was. He always stayed the same. I thought He's that a, was really good. He yeah. was a constant. Yep. And I thought it was. It, and what I wanted to discuss about Guppy was. Did he start to develop a personality or not? Yeah. Yes. Was he oh, learning yes. and developing his own? Because there's a bit I was listening to today where he was asked about the fires um, on Delta, Delton, and um, he's like, oh, he's, he said, the oh, greatest probability is that they're wildfires. He says, yeah, but what do you think they might be? He's like, I do not have an opinion. <laughs> And it was just like, really? Because by the end of these three books, you really well do. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he definitely developed. Yeah. He was and like, he got really snarky and kind yeah. of. Yeah, um, well, there was even yeah. the where he rolls his eyes. It was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, the first thing we need to do is build bombs. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's... <laughs> so I was, I just, I, I liked him, but I also didn't know how to sometimes react to him because at the beginning I just wanted to quickly like talk about this is at the beginning he's part of Bob and then Bob separates him out so mm -hmm. do you remember when we're in um in the facility and it is a really cool bit where he's going I looked at the wall where there were 12 hangers going on or, you know, there were 36 rumors you know he's like um, oh, yeah. how long will that take 365 days I didn't ask kind of thing where at first he's like it's really cool and by the end of it, he's like you're just being a pain he's like uh, leave it all he's like, a parent of shut off he's like now i've heard its feelings it was really funny <laughs> but and that's where it's kind of that taste of oh it's not him mm. but it could be so i think this is all these little choices that he made that stopped him from going nuts too yeah like, okay i'm going to separate that out and then it will help him in the long run of like i'm going to go and fix up all some of my security stuff and i'm going to you know, some of the first things he did was like, okay, well, I don't like how this is going. I'm going to change that. Yeah, I'm taking back the night or something. I think the fact that he came from a, um, a software engineering background oh. was a massive, yeah. A massive yes, yeah. I think if he hadn't, he wouldn't have survived. He would have gone nuts too because he would yeah, have done all those virtual realities. And yeah, I, I thought mean, it was interesting that all the Bobs had their different versions of virtual reality. We might have to talk about which were our favourite ones, although I can't remember all of them now. I thought there was one, I don't remember which Bob had it, where it was a big ass viewing platform onto whatever was outside. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that um, Icarus? No, I don't think it was or... Icarus. I think it was whoever found Big Top and what ended up being Quilt. Hey, okay. You know, Clark Clown KKP? Clark. KKP, yeah. Clark Clown. Oh, yeah. Clark Clark Clark. Clark Planet, yeah. Yeah. Um, I really liked the one who was, um, I can't remember his name, but he was the one who was supporting uh, original Bob um, on, on Delta Aridney. And Garfield. Oh, yes. Yeah, and he was doing the different um, yeah, books and things. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. That was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, because he was just mixing it up and trying different things all the time, and I was like, yeah, that's that sounds pretty cool to me. If I could do that, that's what I'd do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, really cool. You're gonna have to come. In. I love how different different bobs started perfecting different drinks. Mm -hmm. and stuff too. Like this guy's like, oh, I've done really good stuff, and then this guy's like, no, oh, I've got coffee, and like, and yeah, there's beer, and then Howard gets and Howard just sets up a business. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. The, the fact that they didn't necessarily always bring it across because they were like, I want to enjoy it when I come to visit this person. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like this point of difference and makes it interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. Oops. Um, what I thought was interesting, this is a little deviation, um, is why the Bobs left themselves looking like Bob. Yes. Mm. 
because, you know, you have the ability to look like whatever you want. Like Homer yeah. actually looked like an avatar of Homer Simpson for a while. Until the other ones got shit with it. Yeah. And especially of the... Well, Riker did, yeah. But yeah. I just kind of like go... I think I it was that, because it was that tie back to him being Bob still. That might be. Yeah, like, maybe it was like an angle. But I do I also if think, like, yeah. if it was me, I don't think I'd make myself look totally different. But I might I, take a few things. I yeah. might make my stomach a bit flatter. I might take away some blemishes on my face. I might, you know. You, you, look, like, you look like in your head. I wouldn't, I wouldn't completely change myself to look like someone completely different. I don't think, I think psychologically that would be kind of weird. Mm. But they would, I would definitely be tweaking a few things. It's the same thing that they had in the Matrix. Little thing better and that little thing better. Yeah. Yeah. In the Matrix, you could look like anyone or anything, but everyone sort of looked like themselves, just stylized. Yes. Yeah. Better clothes. Human humans are probably very hard to that Mm. visual, that self image of. Yeah. I think that's. I I I get it because I I think maybe this is a thing about the you know like. Maybe it's a guy thing. Maybe it's a female thing because of, you know, years and years of stuff upon us. But, yeah, I would Mm -hmm. definitely would be wanting to change myself up. And also, you know, as someone whose original spelling of their name meant there were six of them in fucking school and I was always known as Sarah P and not just Sarah, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you change your name? I was the opposite. I was the, why can't I ever fucking find something in a souvenir shop with my name on it? (laughs) <laughs> never there was always Kristen there was never Kirsten really okay. wow yeah. well, yeah, that's now. probably not that unusual now but when I was a kid I never ever met another Kirsten mm. ever I had the same problem it was always Melissa no Melanie this is odd you two had to be an NZ because there was heaps of them <laughs> <laughs> um, quick uh, so moving on let's get on to the cohort uh, Riker, who's Bob, was number two. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was true. <laughs> that was appropriate. Yeah. So he's like, well, good. I'm number two, so I have to be Riker. Except he yeah. was number one. Yes, but he's, yeah. No, he was number two. Picard was no. number one. No, no, but yeah, Riker, no, he, he, Picard he's the first to officer. Riker as the first his first officer, officer number one. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It didn't matter. It still worked. Yeah. It still worked in that he was like I the liked second that in charge. Kept, kind of yeah. I like that Homer kept calling him number two. Like, I like well, and it was also, <laughs> spoiler alert, it's why we knew, I knew something was kind of up. With Homer? Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I knew something was up with him early too. Yeah. I and knew something was up. Oh, don't get me started. Oh, don't get me started. I know, I know. We'll get, to, we'll get to it. Spoiler alert. There'll be tears. Mm. Um, Bell. Bob number three, he stayed Epsilon Aridani. Yep. Love that name. Epsilon Aridani. Is that a um, thing? Because, like, that was one of the things that I was like, is this side a note. that I don't know? What was that? Sorry, sorry, side note. How he pronounced, pronounced Epsilon Aridani and then changed to Epsilon Aridani from book one to book oh, two. Uh, oh, he, also changed, he also changed, remember the character was... Um, Archimedes, Archimedes. And, Archimedes and in the first in the first audiobook he called him Archimedes and I was like what the fuck are you talking about Archimedes obviously you're naming him after Archimedes the philosopher which is Archimedes <laughs> yeah and obviously the audiobook people got 10,000 emails about that you don't say Archimedes you say Archimedes because suddenly in book it was Archimedes is it Epsilon Aridini is that the same fucking place yeah oh, about? Epsilon Aridini oh, yeah. and Epsilon Eridani yeah. Same place. It's just Damn it. pronunciation. Okay. See, this is why the um <laughs> the physical book rather than the audio book would yeah. not have been. Well, it's confusing. like it's like your Uranus versus Uranus. They're both yeah. gross, right? Yeah. They're both gross. <laughs> but most of the time, I one of them is it. worse to say in front of a classroom full of ten year olds. Which one, Uranus other. or Uranus? <laughs> well, Uranus, because right. they're all like <laughs> anus. And you're like, well, if you say, but then if you say Uranus, they're all like, isn't it Uranus? <laughs> and you're like, well, I'm screwed no matter what I do. But, um, <laughs> there is no winning. No. Okay. So Epsilon Aridani, Arudini, depending on how you want to say it. That's where yeah. Bill stayed. And um, is he the one at Garfield? No, he had someone different. Oh, well, I can't remember. Matt had a thing that he said to me that had all the names and then all the, like, who was had, the 
Milo, who was the explorer. Oh, yeah, there was like a, a history of bills. He yeah. went to, a I don't Bob know, was it 82 Even? Rivenny? Bob family tree. Oh, yeah, there was 82 yeah. Rivenny. See, that was what was confusing. Is that where Vulcan and Romulus were? I got confused until they started talking about who was on the planet and what was going yeah, on. Yeah, I was, I was like, oh, we're on the planet. We're on the planet with all those bat people. Okay, I'm cool. Now I know where Deltans, we are. Deltans, yeah. The Deltans. That yeah. was the Deltans, yeah. 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 I just, and then I, there was a pack that them. And the other one was what, Epsilon Squared? It's something squared. And I was like, is this a joke I don't get? Is this it's something not, to do with Futurama? It's not squared. It's Epsilon 2. No, no, there was, just, no they, squared, in the audio book they say squared. They said squared. Oh, weird. Okay. No, yeah, they say Epsilon they, Squared that's originally. Notate, and I was like, that's just like, so, like astronomical notation for things. You don't yeah, normally see, say it's yeah. squared. So that Matt, must be an, an audio book thing because they can definitely Can you please tell us squared. why all the systems have similar names? Because that was what drove a lot of us up the wall. It was like, I can tell who's you. fucking where? Because they all I have can tell you why. Names. It's based on the star. Yeah. So, like, we is. would be, if we if we were to do it with um our solar system, it would be, so Mercury Sol would be Sol 1 and Venus would be Sol 2 and Sol Earth two. would be Sol 3. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, no, it's based on the star name. Yeah. Right, and each planet is, 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 yeah, yeah. So, as cats decide. So, all the epsilon planets are all all going Within around the same star or stars, depending on whether it's. So, a, they're all orbiting the same black hole because that's what the, that's yeah, it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, right, okay. So, yeah. their galaxy oh, they're all in the same solar system. Epsilon, and then each system is epsilon. So, their they're solar system, not galaxy. But so a solar kind of system is a singular, a singular star or yeah. star with things around it. The galaxy. But epsilon would be the name of the star. But it can't be. No, no. Epsilon Iridani is the name of a star. The star. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've got it now. Anyway, thank you for clearing that up. That's Sorry, exciting. there's a thunderstorm coming over us right now. That's Let's exciting. I can't hear it. No, I just heard thunder. I was like, is what? And then looked at the... the no, the apparently there yeah. seemed to be rain coming. Someone said to me, oh, you know, have, I said, have a good weekend. And they were like, yeah, you know, it's going to be raining. And I was like looking at the sky going, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You say so. So let's get to the two, the two, the two bits, um, key parts, soul and the deltons. Mm -hmm. um, the, what I preferred... Soul, personally, Delta, Delta was interesting, but I felt like it got drawn out. Um, yes, ditto. And by the time mm. I was the second time, I fast-forwarded through all the chapters on Delta. Um, well, yeah, I was kind of like just through the Delta stuff because I could see it was fucking up and I was just like, oh, God. Like it was one of those, it's like nails on a blackboard for me. I was like, I know you're making stupid mistakes with his people and you're trying to help and it's making it worse. And it was just frustrating me. Well, the other thing that I found realised during book three that I hadn't noticed at all during the other two is that there's actually, at the beginning of each chapter, they would read a time indicator and I don't know if it was all the way through because I didn't go back and re-listen to them and it's it not is. a book so I couldn't check. They, they they're all them. off. They're not, it's not happening, things are not happening at the same time. No, because no. of time dilation. No, they're not. And uh, so I found that really frustrating because I was like, oh, that's why this story is just being dragged out because it's got absolutely nothing to do with the time planning that's happening with everything else. No. So yeah. they're, they're happening at the, they're happening, it's interesting, they're happening in chronological order from the perspective of a person who's not moving. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, it was, I, I, I think maybe with it, I just didn't pay that much attention yeah. to the time. It's, I didn't really either. hard until I set up Scott. And then you understand oh. how it's per working. And I thought no, that was really interesting that they were like, so it was confusing a little bit for me, like which people had this gut thing and which didn't. And it was like, oh, suddenly such and such is online and now they can tell us all the shit. And, the, yeah, and you were yeah. waiting for people to get online with the network. And I thought yeah. that was really interesting, actually, yeah. that, that SCUT network. Yeah. And, yeah, and uh, I want to like talk about the science behind that a little bit. There's no science, sorry. No, <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be nice if we would have fun. Yeah, yeah. I noticed he glossed over it a bit and he was always talking like in the books, they, you know, around these things, they always they gloss over these parts and how it works and atom by atom and how this happens. Right, and I noticed he did the same thing about <laughs> so, uh -huh. Yeah. 
Um, can someone please tell me, remind me, what SCUT as an acronym? Because he oh, said I can't remember. Half the time I would, I, like seriously, I didn't even remember there were acronyms. There were words to me. I, yeah, yeah, that was me with the audio book. Yeah, yeah I, but I was making I notes because it was this acronym. was my hangout, so I was making notes. It was um, it was something <laughs> like subspace communication something. Transmitter or something? Transmitter yeah, or network. Something like that. No, no, it's networking. It's something. No, there's no, no. Name SCUT. no, no, no. <laughs> Um, that's my second drink. <laughs> Although, I'm in my defense, this is like a, a 8% cider, by the way. So, ciders are always like I've had those, too. they're nice. The pear one's really good. This is the, yeah, that's this all the right. cherry, cherry one, cherry pagan cider. Cherry, I, that's a Tasmanian one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. My my beer is one pint, but it's 4.8 standard drinks in one pint. Jesus Christ. Wow. I don't want to tell you about my uh, my deliciousness. That was oh, a lot. No, I do want to know. It was very, you know, heavy. Um, okay, <laughs> so Delta and Soul. The Soul stuff I thought was great. Butterworth um, I enjoyed and I loved. Uh, spoiler, I was I actually felt that he wasn't given the send-off he should have been. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, I liked Butterworth. I had a soft I opinion. liked him too. And as you saw in my head, even though you can't cast him, I, I saw him as Mars from Zero Duck. I, <laughs> I pictured picked him as Patrick Stewart crossed with Colonel Clink. <laughs> Colonel Clink? <laughs> Actually, that works for me. I like the idea of him looking like Colonel Clink. <laughs> no, he had a he has a mustache. I, I just yeah. Don't know. I don't know. It was probably more the way the audio book goes. It was more red, red Colonel, but Colonel, but I was more like, Colonel Sanders. No, see, I didn't see that at all. No, I no, have like I'm with Patrick you. Stewart. Kind of, I could totally see Patrick Stewart playing him. Uh, actually, yeah. I don't know what it is about that. I was just like, I could see him kind of being gruff, but like nice on the inside kind yeah. of thing. Like you know. Yeah, maybe that's why I had a soft spot for him because that was kind of where my brain went. Oh, uh, no, much. I had a soft spot for him too. And, um, yeah, hence why, spoiler um, to Karina, I wasn't happy with his send-off. So, um, yeah. But neither was Bob. I think Bob was like, come on, dude, what? why don't you, like, upgrade, the, uh, upload yourself and then you can do forever. And the dude's like, He's like you no, mean not, Howard? Not for me. Oh, I don't know. Whichever Bob it was, I can't. It was I, Howard. No, it was, he wanted to, but he, um, yeah. Wasn't it Riker? No, I think it was It Riker. might have been Riker. Riker was the one, Riker had was the one that had the, yeah. He yeah, had the yeah, Riker was the one that had yeah. a good sort of relationship. Yeah. yeah. Howard um, and Butterworth ended up having a very close relationship. So Riker and him butted heads a lot, but they got on. And then when Howard... Um, yeah, Howard was the one that he kind of really got along with. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. And because then like, all the pressure was off. Now it was about colonisation and it was working mm -hmm. together. And, then, and Howard but, was the one that was brewing him whiskey. That's why I liked him. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> Howard had made an effort with, specifically with him, really, yeah. to befriend mm -hmm. him. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And um, Yeah, because he kept saying to Howard, like, I'm glad you're not like her. <laughs> no offence, but. Yeah. No offence. And, like and it's kind of like, well, true, but. Buddy, it was pretty shitty back here. Here we're having fun. <laughs> you know, the yeah. dinosaurs. <laughs> you can tell that Riker was like, I'm, I'm over all of you. Just fuck you all away. Yeah. Do, I, do we yeah. really need Why to save the human bothered? race? Yeah. What am I saving the human race for? You're all a bunch of assholes. Yeah, yeah. which yeah, I don't blame him for being in the circumstances he was in. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's quickly uh, talk about Riker and Homer and how yeah. I don't know oh, how God. Homer came from Riker in any way, <laughs> shape or form. I but, love like it, They were actually kind of like, and yeah, spoiler alert, I cried. Oh, I cried so in book two. I, I cried in book two. So hard. It was yeah. really um, cool. I don't think I, I cried actually, but I was very sad. But no, I, I was like, driving in traffic and I was like, yeah. I, I, was actually like, cried, no. I actually cried more from the Riker perspective. So not some, like the discovering and everything was awful. But the Riker perspective, like um, when he got the revenge and then later on during the final big battle, I was just like, oh, Riker, I just want to give you a great big hug, you poor dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just really gut-wrenched when, uh, when he when he sort of, when they got him out and yeah. he just like and felt the floor on the floor screaming. And, and was screaming and keening. Yeah, oh, that was a bit of me too. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Um, so, um, but I loved him and I thought he was funny, you know, like I think... Once he got back to Seoul and he had his mission to 
and he was very much passionate. He was so passionate about the people. Home yeah. really mm-hmm. came to life, and I think he was much less annoying and actually able to balance out well a lot yeah. more. With his and donut. I thought, I thought it was funny. It was Homer and his donut. Yeah. <laughs> his Homer donut. and his donut. <laughs> growing donut. But that's one of the things I thought that the author did a fantastic job w- with was that that character development that um, it, the, the different um, versions of Bob got. But in particular, I think Homer really showed that, but I think Riker was a strong one for that too, yeah. was that development and change over time that you saw with them was just really yeah. fascinating. Absolutely. And because each of them are in different situations and contexts, yeah. they developed and evolved differently and had not differing opinions but approached things in different ways. Yeah. And Riker just softened because he had had to deal with so much. And he either could have gone one way or the other and he mm-hmm. chose not to. He's like, and after losing Homer, I think that for him was yeah. like, I don't have him to be my foil anymore. I need to become more like him. Yeah. yeah. Which was which was beautiful. And he says that himself, I think, you know. Um, but I love that but where Homer he didn't I, I always thought he was restored from a backup, but he wasn't. He just they just needed to patch up the ship and then I could boot him back up again. Um, but when he came back up and he's like, I am, I am <laughs> the Wizard of Oz reference <laughs> was very funny. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, like, so I guess we got him. Yeah, the little dog too. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was very good. And I did think um, this line in particular I'm refer, re- reference to um, Homer's Donuts um, and Kudzu, which is a real plant, by the way. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. I've never it's heard a real of it plant. I like this when he says, it's not the food of the gods, although deities were often evoked while eating it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I think that's just such a great example of Dennis e. Taylor's writing. I just, it, mm. there were so many times I capped out loud. Oh, me too. It was just such great writing. I couldn't writing. tell you any of them because I was, it's an audio book and it's not like a Kindle where I can highlight stuff. But yeah, but yeah. I, I started noticing. There was lots of time I was like driving in traffic and laughing my ass off. So. Mm-hmm. Well, one yeah. of the other ones that like, at some point I absolutely need to quote if I ever get the opportunity where um, they when they're getting ready to leave, they were saying, oh, do we have the chance to ask, uh, this is Leave Soul, they said, oh, do we have the chance to ask the, dele- the delegation or do they call it? Sure we do. We just don't have time to ask to, to wait for a decision. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I was that was such great. I was yeah. like, I love that. One day I want to answer a question of that whether we can wait, whether we can ask. Yeah, them. Sure, <laughs> sure, we can ask we them. We can't wait for them to what they say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was really cool. You know, time for them to make up their minds, and yeah. just, especially because that was like. It would have taken them six months to make up their minds the way they're at with everyone. Oh, oh God, if, if they ever make up their minds. But that Jesus. is so true, right? We're just oh, yeah. Like, you can imagine the United another. Nations would be just like that. Like in the last week, we've got another fucking Prime Minister. I mean, oh, yeah. honestly, yeah. this yeah. job is about as enticing as, the, you know, the defence of the dark arts teacher. Just choose three oh, people. I've seen, I've seen like three different memes that would yeah, compare the Australian Prime week. Minister. No, well, like the no, specifically referring to it as like the defense oh, against exactly. the dark arts. Yeah, def- I'm sure you posted something about it, Sarah. But I, sure I did post it. about it, but it's because I, I saw something yeah. on Twitter the yeah. last time saying this job seems to keep people as easily as the defense of the dark arts. When I was like, "Fuck, it's funny because it's true." Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, except like, it's worse because they're backstabbing each other instead of teaching yeah. and having a reason to be out of a job. <laughs> Yeah, like, like being the supporter of the Dark Lord. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, um, then um, mostly, so, they're more Gilderoy Lockhart than anything else, though, most of them, aren't they? Scone yes. More. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dutton, Dutton's a bit like... Um, Umbridge. Umbridge? I <laughs> thought that she was defensive. But she she wasn't defensive against yeah, the Yeah, she was. She was. Yeah, she was. She was. Yeah. Oh, oh, there you go. That's she the, wasn't uh, Umbridge then. That's my that's my Yeah, um, she did all the theory. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's okay. like you can't actually learn shit because Sorry. That, yeah. that's when they set up It's been um, a while. I haven't I didn't get to do the reread last. What was the classes called that they said? Yeah. The, the D- D- Army. Army. I thought yeah. their classes was a specific name. Yeah. Um anyway, that's another series that we love. <laughs> Uh, so like people, people can't listen to us without understanding. We're this. still live, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know the time's going live. We've got two more books to go. So, <laughs> hopefully, anyone who listens to us knows about Harry Potter. <laughs> so, the book finishes with setting up of the Vulcan for Butterworth. Butterworth. 
too much gin. <laughs> too much gin. Only one butter. One butter. No, that's not worth. Not, not a plural. Well, butter's butter. worth. Butter worth. Right. No, butter's worth. No. <laughs> um, a bit like butters from South <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that's everything from book one before we move on. Was there anything else that uh, people thought about? I couldn't tell you because all the books are in, it's one book in my head. Um, I know, yeah, it, was my it is kind of one book. And that's why yeah. I wasn't And it reads sure like one book. Like I got to the end and I was like, well, I can't stop there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, um, the only thing I was just thinking was we haven't really talked about too much about Bob. That's because he's oh, really dull. Old Bob. Bob. But, Bob. <laughs> but his story really stretches more than anyone's across all three books uh, as a, like yeah. a continuous story on Delta Pavonis. I thought it was – no, no, no. Delta, no, Delta, no, the other Ridney. one, sorry. Um, yeah, not yeah, yeah. Was Delta. Delta. Yeah, this was yeah, about yeah, Delton yeah. somewhere. And Archimedes. Yeah. Or Archimedes. I don't know how you're supposed to say it. Oh, no, they, the first book was Archimedes, but but I'm like, that's not how you say it because it's Archimedes, like the philosopher. Like, yeah, has anyone ever yeah. said that? Like, well, I I'm not sure how the, the audiobook guy didn't realise that. But... Well, he has a director. The director should have mm. been directing. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but I actually, I don't believe, I'm like Hank Green with GIFs and GIFs and Jeffs yeah. and I don't know if anyone's. Yeah, both true. I mean, how do they? How do they? I'm like Greek exactly names are pronounced differently. Like, um, you know, there's Nicola or Nicola. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know, this is this is the bane of my existence at the moment because I have teach so many different kids and I'm like, is it Wyler or Layla or Layla? Oh, and they get so oh, offended if you do it wrong. And yeah, and when you say it wrong, and I'm like, yes, but I say it wrong every week because I go, it's one or the other, and I must have said it wrong last time, so I'm going to try it the other way this week. And they're like, no, that's what you said last time, and it's still wrong. And I'm like, oh, ah. I'm just bad with names. Sorry. Yeah, you need to improve yeah. the memory. I just, what I end up doing is in my head, I add letters or subtract them where I have to. Because mm -hmm. I, have, I have friends with um, cultural names of their culture. And mm -hmm. so, for instance, my friend's husband is Narlin. His name is spelled N A L I N. Which mm. I would have said Nalan. Yeah. But she was like, no, Narlin. I'm like, like the fish Marlin. And she's like, no, there isn't an R in it. And I'm like, well, you pronounce no, it but... an R. <laughs> so I'm going Listen to add to the one sound, in. Not the letters. Like, yeah, wrong. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, that's probably why I just, when people say Kristen and Sarah Kirsten, I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll just answer you. Because... Yeah, my friend's got a, a, her daughter is, and I still don't. So when I see it written down, I want to say it Janava, but it's Janava, and I just, I, oh, there you go. Am I getting it right or wrong? I pronounced it wrong for years, and no one ever corrected me. And I was like, oh, no. That's and the I other thing. Know. When, when people are just like to correct you and you just keep saying it wrong, that happens too. Yeah. But does that mean that so, they just don't care or that they're? No, I, I think she I cares. Think. I know she cares, but I just. She's yeah, anyway. It's a lot I'm of the time they're just being polite, especially with kids yeah. when they when you're the teacher. Know, like, right? Yeah. Well, you're the teacher, I better not correct you. Yeah. Like, Please correct me at the beginning so I don't keep looking like an idiot for the rest of the year. Yeah. That's all right. I answer to everything now. Everything yeah, well, that's not even <laughs> my name. Like because I work I I work in healthcare, so I have lots of elderly people trying to say my name. I get everything from Naomi to Amy. To what? Maybe to How do they get Amy because I don't listen when I speak and they just uh, hear right. the end of my name and then they just hear oh, me Amy? at the end and they're like, Oh, oh Amy. Amy. I'm like, no, Well, in fairness to you, Naomi, you probably know that, but you know I, that as we get older, they can't hear, you know, we, we, we all of us can't hear specific <laughs> uh, frequencies, so often words that you know. They're not, they're not meaning to mispronounce. They probably actually haven't heard that in that part because it's at a frequency they can't hear. I still get confused because I'm like, it's got an A and an I. It's Naomi. Like, it's Naomi. Is yeah. it? Naomi. Naomi. Yeah. But then why does, why does Karina call you Nay if you're Naomi and not I Naomi? I call her Gnomes because she used to call herself Nomi Gnomes. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I answered everything now. Yeah. That's all I mean. Oh, so, okay, so, so, so Karina calls you Nay. But you pronounce yeah. it Naomi, and that's like does my head in, and, I, and my brain is like I can't remember which way. When I tell people how to pronounce my name, I say Naomi only because then I know people will know what I mean, mm. and they'll have an image of how my name is spelled. When I tell people that my name is Naomi, 
they spell my name N I O M E. Yeah, like, oh. that's not even close. Whereas if I say Naomi, at least they're just missing the I, and at least looks. Like yeah, it. really. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Much, You've just gotten reason, used to saying it. Yeah. The only reason my mum added the extra I was so that I wasn't called Nay because my uncle was threatening me, to, threatening to call me Nay like a horse before I was even born. He was threatening. <sighs> and, wow. and yet. And yet, that's what Karina calls you all the time. My name is Nay. Yeah, I'm okay with it. But she says it with love. She doesn't say it with hatred. (laughs) Well, look, put it this way. When I told my father that we'd named Luna Luna, he's like, he's like, like lunatic. Oh, really? Does Luna? Luna That's what comes into his head. He's like, oh, the lunatic. And I was like, I think I think Luna loves it straight away. But then now that's because. That is who she is named after. Um, um, except now, now um, Xander and Claire are pretty obsessed with PJ Masks. So now it's like Wonder Girl. Have you seen PJ Masks? Does she watch that? And so one of the villains in this in this show, it's like a kid's yeah. cartoon. It's called Luna Girl, and she's like one of the villains, and she's awesome. She's like she has this like moon shaped like. Oh. Um, it's like a. It's, it's kind of like it does a, multiple things. It's like a, a hoverboard, but it's sort of shaped like a moon, and it can fly and stuff. And then she has this okay. this army of moths that do her bidding. She's brilliant. Armies of moths. Oh, that sounds very much like a book we just read. <laughs> yeah, it's it's was, actually, it kept Getting making me think that. But yes, anyway, you should make her watch <laughs> PJ Masks. She'll yeah. be like, "Oh, Luna yeah. girl, it's awesome." Mostly, when I say my daughter is called Luna, most people go, "Oh, my cat slash dog is called Luna." <laughs> What, from like Sailor fair, Moon, I think. Some of them are Sailor Moon, it comes which from I'm moon, down with. Like, but know. a lot of people just call, like it seems to be a very popular pet's name. Because <laughs> well, I ask at that point, then I'd say, they say, oh, my, and they, I say, uh, so I say, my daughter's name is Luna, and they go, and they go, oh, my cat slash dog is named, if it's a cat especially, is named Luna, and I go, like Sailor Moon, and I get these blank looks, and I go, "Well, I won't tell you my daughter's name after Luna Love Good Thing, because yeah. apparently your idea of popular culture and mine are, you know, mm. we're not on the same way." <laughs> like, how did you get to Luna as a pet name if you're not naming them like after either Luna Love Good or Luna the Cat from Sailor Moon? Like, why yeah, would you cat, think of- you would, that would make total sense, wouldn't it? If it's a cat, that it yeah. would be from Sailor Moon. But there's so many dogs called Luna; it's ridiculous. I don't know what it is. is Maybe they're like because- howling at the moon or something. Maybe I know that there was a character in True Blood who was a were a werewolf, and she was. Oh, she was quite. I forgot about her. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway, book two. We're way off topic because that's what right. we do. Right. <laughs> if you're new to LDUH, this is what we do. Um, this is what we do. We and I'm just. I was planning actually. Speaking of being off topic, I want to get our logo printed and I did but I want to get on the back and I was trying to figure out how to do it going off topic since whatever the date was that day the year off that yeah, we you'll have to find that year you have yeah. to find it. yeah and I was thinking how do I get that yeah. done so that it says that on the waistband going off topic since <laughs> you, you take the file and you edit it and you have it going around the part of it um, and do it on the front oh ah, okay so I yeah, think that's probably that's the only way to do it because most companies different. that print the front of your t shirt won't print the back as well. Oh, uh, so I want both. No, okay. no, no. I've seen. I will I pay a found, premium. I haven't found one that will do that, but there probably is one, but I don't know. Okay, so we anyway. are many. Well, Since we are 2012, many. by the way, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. Since 2012. Fuck. Wow. Wow. And you still <laughs> haven't finished that blanket. She's <laughs> <laughs> close. She's nearly there. I'm still going with mine. <laughs> oh, okay. So for we, I mean, um, Bob is really involved with the Deltons. Could we, could we have seen this banishment coming? Sounds like we could have. Oh God, yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, I'm surprised it didn't happen earlier because he's like, oh, Jesus he was just Christ, he's so involved. He was being yeah. such a look. Like, so this surely is Bob guys. Oh, watched no. Ghostbusters. Surely he watched fucking Star and Trek. We know, he, we know he did. He mentioned the Prime Directive. He mentioned the Prime Directive many times and then yeah. kept ignoring it. I want to talk about the Prime Directive, but back to Matt quickly. <laughs> yeah. You were making what? a point and then we all shouted over. Oh, him. I was just saying, didn't didn't he ever watch Ghostbusters? Like, if someone asks you for God, like, and you say You no, say yes. You say yes. <laughs> But yeah, being a god's a bad. Uh, see, see, every, I got that 
nobody else in here got that. Because mm-hmm. you and me, Matt, we're like this. <laughs> they obviously didn't put it in the new Ghostbusters because I've watched that a few times. <laughs> uh, it's one of the best quotes along with um, where do these stairs go? Yeah. Up. <laughs> Quite a long way. Uh, anyway. Right. Back to, okay. Back to bus, so back to you see the banishment coming. Um, and then I said here, Howard is busy setting up Vulcan. It's interesting how Butterworth seems to get on better with Howard. And then we were talking about this before. Is it the circumstance change or does he really appreciate it's a different Bob and not Riker Sash Will? Mm. I think he actually did get that. I think, I think he did too because he think he talks about it a little bit as well. He says, he actually- I find you so much easier to work with and get on with than I ever did with Riker. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The circumstance may have helped I yeah, that's so. true. I, I mean, again, well. Howard and Riker are different people. Oh, like, yeah, they're they're different, absolutely. Yeah. And I think and to I mean, some people. What Howard has to put up, uh, not Howard, sorry, what Riker has to put up is not just from Butterworth, but from the UN in general. Oh, it makes yeah. him a lot more yeah. abrasive to, like, trying to make decisions because he has to sort of second-guess everything he is doing because if he sort of, if he agrees to do something with Butterworth, and everyone's going to say that he's doing it because he spoke to them first or, mm-hmm. you know, like people are going to accuse him of favouritism or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he's, yeah. like, he's always second-guessing every choice he makes. And once yeah. Butterworth gets to Vulcan, yes, he's a lot sort of chiller because, mm-hmm. you know, he's obviously his, you know, his people aren't, you know, in a different dead. Yeah, he's like, that bit's done. We're on to this bit, yeah. Yeah. But I mm-hmm. think there also, like, about... there's just a lot less pressure on Howard as well. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I think, and I think Butterworth himself even talks about it, but I think he kind of thought, he probably went in thinking, it's a Bob, it's the same. But through working with Howard, realises, you know, he's just, I think it's like working with someone's twin. You kind of mm. probably have that perception of working with someone's sibling. Oh, they're so like, they so look so much like them. You know, they, they seem the same. And then you go, actually, no, they're different. Yeah, they're different. yeah. I sense that. And thus, I, re- you know, I, I act differently because he definitely was was different. But mm. I, think, um, I think he also, to a certain extent, maybe it's because, hey, the Bob's actually delivered. We're here. We're doing it, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, trust yeah. And faith, yeah. Been, like not in the acronym way, but trust and faith has been restored. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and Riker, you know, like he already had that kind of uptight personality, and then he has to deal with all this shit, which kind of made him even more uptight. Yeah, like yeah. Whereas Howard kind of didn't have that, but he was already more laid back before. Mm. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. like a double edged sword. So, yeah, and that's probably yeah, part Riker, of like, I kind of felt. So Sometimes like, yeah. you know, and that's part of the reason about coming up when you know when Riker came when sorry when Howard came online as a clone from Riker and that thing that Naomi talked about about deciding that you're like going yes I am different thus I'm going to go in this direction it's almost that free nerve going I could I can actually now see perspective of how Riker wasn't working in the system and yeah. what I need to pick from my personality to make this work as accompanying Bert and Ernie to a new system. I need to put on yeah. more of this. Like it's, it's that ability to go, that is not my history anymore. It's part of my collective consciousness, but it's not me. I can actually determine and decide to be someone different, which I think mm-hmm. is kind of cool. Um, I wanted to make a quick note, because I put a note in here, that uh, because we're talking about Howard, and so I want to talk about Bridget. And my note mm. is the author's wife is Irish. Mm. Uh, did anyone know that? I Notice did not that? know that. Um, certainly explains a lot. Yes. Irish her name is a very, yes. Uh, yeah, Jamison's. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat Scotch. I'm sorry. I, I know, can't I'm believe like, that Butterworth drank it straight. <laughs> <laughs> we drinks it straight. I'm like. Jamison's from everything I've been known about Jamison's, you should drink it with something. Mm. <laughs> at least. Um, anyway, she, her name, she's Irish. She has some kind of, speaking of unpronounceable names that you always get wrong, some Irish name, beginning with B, I might add. And she is uh, on Instagram and she looks at fan art from people um, who've tagged it with Bobiverse and 
Mm. There's some really cool things to check out on Instagram if you look at the hashtag Bobiverse and where she's talked about stuff. The only thing I disliked is that she refers to herself as the wife of the famous author. I'm like, hey, you're, mm. you're a person in your own right. You just mm. happen to be his wife. I kind of felt like that for the character too. I was kind of like, oh, you feel like just a caricature that's there to be a romance interest and not really a fully fledged yes. character. Yeah. So now let's get into Mel's part. Let's talk about the females. Mm. The lack of. Yeah. And actually this is a good opportunity because in book two is also where we go to Waterworld, uh, uh, <laughs> a.k.a. Poseidon. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, I, I don't know if this is book when we get is it book three because i'm just going to come three. down the base now is book three when we have the coup yeah that's yeah, book yes, three. It's number okay three. yeah okay sorry <laughs> yeah see i they really like book one i i can at least go in my mind oh yes book when ended when they came off earth um the other two are like i don't know so i listened to them in a row i didn't i don't okay. think i even I can tell you quiet. where book two ends because i made a note with the waking up the pav and working out um uh, how okay. who to take how to take the fight to them first okay right i thought this was uh i'll talk about this in a minute but yeah where were we we're talking about the females mel you i want to let's hear from you well i think that given that there was an awful lot of interactions with humans and and other cultures there was a severe lack of female interaction mm -hmm. in general um, mm -hmm. In fact, I think book three is about when it got good in terms of, like you said, the um, the revolution. There was a fair amount of female representation with the interaction there. But it was still a very short storyline. Overall, I was like, seriously, are females still doing that poorly? Outside of Faith, I was like, really, I felt like it was disproportionate. I think what Even was disproportionate was not the lack of females but the lack of substantial females. So yeah. if we think about the... Um, the council there were several females on that council yes um if we think about Riker will's family there was julia in that but mm. she was actually not given a substantial role compared to her bloody son justin yeah the whole chapter right yes um, definitely yeah so i really liked bridget i thought she was substantial um but she was also like you said a love interest and then yeah. what was the name of the character? I'm going to have to check my notes who ended up being like um, voted in. in um... <sighs> Do you mean one of the people who was in the coup? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. What's her name? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. I, I know like what it was mean, like, but... sp like Spanish or Portuguese kind of <coughs> name. Like, I don't yeah. Remember. Exactly. I know who because, you mean, but I can't think of the name. Yeah, because yeah. he like he spent more time talking with – the male character in that than the female yeah. one but she was definitely came off smarter but he didn't seem to talk to her and i remember yeah. that very keen keenly i just felt like in the end that the author felt more comfortable writing female uh, writing male characters yeah and in general he gets away with it in this because really most of the <laughs> characters are just versions of bob and therefore very mm -hmm. male because he's very much like cis het male um mm -hmm. and i thought that was an interesting factor that that never seemed to change um <laughs> That yeah. we know of, Sorry? some of the Bob, some of the Bob seemed very, very close, and it was never really explicitly said what the relationship was between some of them. Like, mm. the, like in general, they like they seemed a lot of them seemed more asexual than anything else. Like, yes, yeah, that's what that's the closest I would have gone. Asexual, like, actually. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the closest yes, I would have gone to something different. Apart from there. Howard, most of them were like, yeah, I don't care if there's no. But I didn't feel like it was an asexual as in I am asexual. I th felt it was more asexual identification in terms of I just can't relate to humans. So yeah, no, I like kind of, a I saw him as a little bit ASD actually. ASD, oh, yes, ASD, yeah. Um, more, some versions of Bob more than others. Yeah. But, um, there's a spectrum in it, but, you know. But then, I mean, Bob <laughs> sort of showed some level of, um, those sorts of traits in some respects. So, in, can you explain in, the acronym to us who have forgotten, please? Sorry, um, autism, autism spectrum disorder. Autism spectrum disorder. Oh, well, my daughter's on that, so you should have, I should have clicked onto it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no and, I, and I definitely think it was, it was more pronounced in some bobs than others. I heard C, yeah. ASC, not ASD. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Mm. But yeah, I think there yeah. was 
that was some of the bobs in particular kind of mm. struck that way with me. But but yeah. Anyway, going back to the female thing, I just felt like he got away with it because of that because mostly the main character was the various versions of Bob, which is why you sort of forgive it all for its lack of representation and stuff. But in the end, see, my problem is, is I actually wasn't a big fan of the Bridget storyline. Yeah, no, I wasn't either. Yeah. Well, I, I kind I, of felt she was written in just so there would be a love interest and I felt it yeah. was a bit forced. I yeah. thought it was more interesting. I thought it was more interesting this look at I felt the, how you dealt with ephemerals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I thought that was it. interesting. I thought that the reaction of her family was interesting. Yeah. Um, and the reaction of people going, you look really young, of like Bob looked yeah. really young. That's what I mean. I think that was, was what was interesting. Yeah. But their relationship itself, I was a bit like, yeah, it felt like cluster. I felt like if if she had been like interested for, with him from the very beginning, and like it like rather than going, I can't remember the other guy's name. Her husband. Oh, yeah, yeah she got married first. Oh, yeah, the uh, Montreal guy. Who's yeah, done. who I really liked. I really yeah. liked that character, and um, so I was sort of like, I I felt like if she had been interested in Bob in that way from the very beginning, but obviously couldn't have any sort of inter like you know involvement that way I would have been fine with it but the fact that she you know she went in a different direction she chose not to go another way it was only because he really got a body that she became mm. interested and I was like eh. yeah I think, think a lot of, I think a lot of it was that she sort of um he was kind of friends um, yeah. like, and I maybe think. she'd grown as a person and changed as a person yeah after. yeah, and yeah. I, think, I think when you lose someone as she did prematurely to death, you know, your life partner. I think she was lonely. And the, the relationship wasn't that. actually sexual, was it? Like no, I'm pretty sure it's never, it. they never had a sexual relationship. It was yeah. more of this companionship. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. On her side. I would think he probably would have if, if she'd but he was content though. He wasn't like Yeah, I know, but I think that's pushing for it. But he I think wasn't. if she wanted to he would have been up for it but that's what i mean the fact i think that, that it just didn't want felt, to didn't bother him yeah it well i don't know it just felt in a, unequal in terms of level he loved engagement. her more than her than she yeah. loved him level yeah. engagement wasn't there to the same degree and that always makes me feel a little bit weird and awkward and i know yeah. that it's absolutely doable but it does always feel a little bit awkward and weird to me and so i just wasn't comfortable mm -hmm. pretty much the whole time with that relationship Although, i think i don't think I, in the end, I think that Bridget really was in 100%. Like, mm. she wouldn't have left herself to be downloaded as a replicant if she didn't really care for him. Mm. Like, yeah. she knew that yeah. would tear her children apart, like, especially yeah. Rosie. She knew that she would probably never get to talk to some of her children ever again, but she yeah. still chose to do it, and that was a choice that she made not being, you know, pushed into it by Howard, not having, you know, mm. not being pushed out of it by her kids. Like she made that decision for her husband. Tell anyone except her lawyer about it until after it was too late. But I also think that the 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 intellectual part of it was a big part of it for her too. Yes. Was the being able to do that study and go on, yeah. you know, on the planet. That's what I steps. felt like too. Well, I felt like she was almost picking that more than she was picking mm. Bob and that was 100%. more of the deciding, honestly, deciding factor for downloading yeah. herself. And honestly, that's, I think that's why I was so disappointed in the treatment of Butterworth because mm, yes. it was such a huge part of both Riker and Howard's life and then... And the storyline. And the storyline, mm. right? He was, yeah. He was the Sun Tzu, right? You yeah. Know, he I would have out. much more. In, I enjoyed the whole replicant argument, like whether or not it was okay to create new ones, from the Butterworth perspective. I know the family perspective mm. was a big part of what made it interesting, but in all honesty, I was far more interested in him making that decision rather than her making a last-minute switch. It's he had mm. made the decision. He was going to do it. It was yeah, only because you know I mean. he had the then he had dementia. And they wouldn't be able no, to no, download no, him properly. No, like that's the only reason. Yeah. You no funeral. I thought that was sad. We didn't go to the funeral. We'd been to freaking Julia's funeral, and we went to Bridget's thing. It's mm. you know, like and, oh, and um, Bridget's husband. Why can't I remember his name? Stefan. 
Stefan, thank there you. you go. Stefan's funeral. We did go to Butterworth's funeral. Mm. And I, like, for me, I felt really annoyed about that because I freaking, I really loved Butterworth. And yeah, I, did. I was yeah. really excited that he would become a replicant because I thought he would really add something to the replicant universe. Yes. You know? Oh, yes. And I thought it's exactly what we need up there. I thought he would take to it in a really enthusiastic way. He had mm. his own thoughts. It, you know, if you wanted to expand out, where you go, like if he wants to write another, you know, story from Butterworth's perspective, that could be really exciting. So I was, I, I guess I was just disappointed. Mm. I was just like the, the idea, but in that when he died and he chose to take his own life because he was having that, they just didn't like. It was almost like that thing of going, well, you committed suicide, so you don't get the same thing as you. I was just, it just really mm. annoyed me. It really yeah. annoyed me. I also thought it would have rounded out the final battle with the others a lot better to have Butterworth involved with that as a strategy. Well, and they were missing him. They were yeah. missing him so much. He even said, I wish Butterworth they mentioned was. It. Mm, yeah. 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 But uh, but it's like my thing is is that Bob does a phenomenal amount of stuff throughout the process of all of this, like, yep. um, like yeah. almost ridiculous levels of how much he actually manages to it, to um, achieve yeah. so to, to, to have the Butterworth factor come in for at least one aspect which just made it would have just made it not quite so well dude how did you do all of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> even just creating Scott was like wow you did yeah. this like huge thing yeah that would have been enough to be interesting like you could, mm -hmm. yeah and then there was the the like asteroid moving technology thing that he came up with as well well and the, and no, the, Android, yeah, the brazilians came up with it first mm. and then they sent, it back to, they sent it back to bill mm. there was it. some reverse engineering and stuff involved but in the end like a lot of the stuff is just it's kind of ridiculous what he managed to do during the time but i mean mm. I, it didn't Remember stop me from enjoying also, that, that was the other thing yeah time the time felt shorter for us too. than what he would have been experiencing in time it's, yeah i kept having to tell about, myself that it's not about the time factor to me it's the about the ability to constantly learn something yeah. new to the level that you're able to innovate oh, yeah. and do build like you could give me 10 million years i still wouldn't have come up with a communication instant communication like <laughs> Sorry. I think you underestimate how long 10 million years is. Yeah, but, but like if oh, you I can only, if you haven't got that, like, that leap in 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 thought that you, you can read all the stuff, you could maybe read everything that was ever written about communications technology. If you haven't got that, like, that little spark of leap from this to this new thing, it could take 10 well, million this, years. This is interesting, though, isn't it? it? Because uh, a lot of the time I got the sense that he sort of offloaded a lot of tasks to happen automatically in the background. Yeah. Like he was utilising the, the computer Amy's. part of his AI mm. to yeah. do stuff and it True. would come up with stuff and then he would sort of apply that human. But, like, can a computer come up with these great leaps in knowledge or is that, that like, that spark of genius that, you know? Depends how much data you feed it, really. Mm. Mm. Okay, I've got more. Um, <laughs> so, but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. So, while we're on Delta and we find the hippogriffs, who yeah. were mm -hmm. the little things that became the big ass <laughs> things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had one nagging question. Did anyone else have this? Why the hell didn't hippogriffs eat gorilloids? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That felt like a big freaking plot hole to me. They'd be living off something. Were they eating them and we just didn't, they just didn't. That was well, that. he said he couldn't find, he found lots of bones of Deltons. They never mentioned the bones of anything else. And I'm like, mm. well. Perhaps the gorillas were too difficult. Like, maybe. they did say that they were eating the uh, warts. Yeah. It might be right. It might be in that they kind of flail around too much, but I don't know. I just. <sighs> yeah. One to one. Deltons were definitely not going to win against a gorilloid in the majority yeah. of cases. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. the tools that helped with that. Yeah. 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 Like, Technology. gorilloids but were definitely like, oh, they still had bulkier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gorilloids were definitely a um, bulkier sort of yeah. gorilla like, <laughs> gorilla like <laughs> yeah. thing. So, what do we think about Bob killing off the hippogriffs, which is what basically got him banished? 
Yeah, I, I, I sort of kind of went, yep, I, I can see this whole thing snowballing, like he's trying to help him, trying to help him, but then because of this little thing that he did, that thing got worse and then he has to try and fix that problem, then he has yeah. to try and fix that problem, then it just snowballed out of out of his control. It and just seemed up. like, you know, that whole thing of they released rabbits to do one thing and then they, yeah. like, this is New Zealand, oh, they all set up gorse to do this and then the gorse goes crazy and it just it was well, like, every time, stop every bringing time. the cane toads to fix all the cane beetles and then yeah. they don't actually like, eat cane beetles. Doing things and with good intentions. <gasps> like, oh, that's exactly what I expected to happen when they were, like, making the little things to, to kill all those giant mosquito things me oh, too like, i was this like this is going to fuck something up yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i expected the same with the rabbits and the vine i was like me too mm -hmm. gonna fuck something up i just fuck something kept, up i kept worrying about the fact that he was probably stunting their ability to grow and uh, mm -hmm. more intelligent by getting in the way of them able, being able to have the experiences they needed to do yeah. that development well mm -hmm. and that's i think that's what is it not marvin See, I get Marvin and Garfield confused, which one's which. Yeah, but, but they um, were both kind of like. Yeah, because oh, they were both their, they they were the partners. Idea. Yeah, partners to Bill and Bob, Garfield and Marvin. I can't remember who was who. I think but Marvin then, was the one that stayed, so I think Marvin's the main one. In Bob's world or in Bill's yeah, world? I remember Garfield better, but maybe okay. that's just because of the name. Because you like Garfield. Well, Probably. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, I can't remember where I was going, but it was long lines. Yeah, so that, that was kind of that question. That's the question about the first directive. How do we feel yeah. about that and the lack of, like, did he do the right thing? Do we, did he not do the right thing? How do we, how do we feel as mm. if we were, re like, replicated? And that's the I, I, I think, think it was natural. Yeah, I think I actually sympathised with him a lot in that. Like, I was like, oh, I can totally see, I, I saw both sides, but I was like, I would, I would be in the same situation where I'm like, help those people. I don't but want to then say that. I also, I also could see where it was about to go wrong and I was like, oh, but I could imagine not wanting to do nothing. Mm. But then I could see that it was going to go wrong and it was just actually stressed me out. The whole, All those chapters stressed yeah. me out because I was like, I know you're going to fuck it up, but I, I wouldn't have done anything differently because <laughs> I would, I would want to help them too. I know? think the problem with the prime directive concept is – in, in these circumstances, is the Prime Directive in the Star Trek world has many, many, many um, already established intelligent um, different beings, right? So he has only discovered at that point one other culture outside mm -hmm. of humans. Yeah. And so f I think that under those circumstances, your natural inclination to protect and preserve is going to kick in a lot harder than it oh, will in a course. Star Trek situation where you've got lots and lots of different cultures. Um, you've, you've also got and a yet, history of the bad things that happen when you interfere. So now there's been a rule put in place that is imposed through the military because that's ba basically what the Federation is yeah. um, that um, says this is what you're not supposed to do. This is totally different how many times how many times on Star Trek do they break Prime, prime Directive? Like, they every not ten times. So, yeah, every time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a very effective one. It's obvious that every Prime Directive I'm, makes sense in well, theory. Well, he's got when, his tongue down some alien's throat. Yeah, yeah but, like, it, it just is a really good illustration of Prime Directive is makes makes complete sense in theory, but as soon as you get emotional about something, yeah. it goes out the window because people, and people are emotional and he, he had that emotional connection with them. And he couldn't just step back because he cared about them and he, he wanted to help even though even when him trying to help made things worse. Mm. And the crazy he, thing was, I mean, did he did he obliterate the hippogriffs? It seemed like he did. Mm. Or they just other Or at least they're yeah, far enough the yeah, other the yeah, other Exactly. Yeah, the um, other ones are far enough away that and they not be honestly were fine after that. Yeah. They but they were him, like mm, and they got mm, you did yeah, they were like, we don't like this big explosion you did. That's kind of scary. Oh. Yeah, and then he got himself, you know, like, and then what did he do? He was got like, why did you send all the people who are causing problems into another camp? Except he didn't think about that because he just said, like, it was just one, you know, mm. we were talking about this with the pad, but it was just this particular subset of young people who didn't have any skills to do what mm -hmm. they needed to do to set up, up a new village, you know. Yeah, because um, my, my thought immediately when he did that, that was that I was like, okay, good, so he's going to establish trade between these two camps, right? And Where's the trade? Yeah. Where's the trade? That's what you do when you've got multiple societies. You trade. So, and because they couldn't trade, they started stealing shit. Yeah. yeah. 
And I just, you sense. know, what I was very annoyed with is that for someone so smart, apparently, and I know this was like self-serving at the bottom of the book, but I'm sitting there thinking, but he wasn't why, very what smart. is the no, third No, that's it's a different kind of smart that he's got. Yeah, he wasn't but, like, very socially person-to-person -person kind of smart. He's very it's just like, there's engineering a smart. Engineering. Like yeah. they even looked at this, they looked at them and said these aren't very good. Wonder why? Maybe that's why they're being, they're stealing and they're being, and they're annoyed and they're being asked to because they're hungry. You know, mm -hmm. like it was just like, it took all of that, which was yeah. a whole piece of the book, which I was just like, I was like, like this about, I was just like so sick. Of, what was the guy's name? Jack? Johnny? I can't remember. You know, you the asshole. Charles? Sorry, no. Uh, Fred. Fred, thank you. Yeah. Um, in that whole bit, I was just like painful, you know. Kutsi, <laughs> I'm going to kill you, Kutsi. I remember that. Um, just kill him and get on with it. I know. Yeah. I was like, and he couldn't let it go. Like he couldn't go. Okay, they banished me. I need to back off. No. He was like, I'll make a body that looks like a pav, and then I'll go down there and pretend that I'm just one of them. And it's yeah, like, because I don't think you get the idea of back off. Become his family. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's that like, only got worse once he was dead down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but then I mean, how is that any different to what Howard did? How is that mm. any different to what um, Riker was like with his um, actual connections with Julia? Like yeah. he was constantly looking for family. Yeah, really, yeah. which is understandable. But yeah, you know what? Bob can make his own family. Yeah, but it's. But Bob did How many not. versions of yourself can you put up with before you start wanting someone that's not you? And I think you know? Bob in particular was not able to connect as well with the other Bobs. I think because yeah. he yeah. was the first. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. very yeah. obvious that he freaked out. Like he hated that idea of. Yeah. yeah. He only tolerated, um, I think, Marvin in particular. Oh. I don't think he liked Garfield that much. Marvin, well, Garfield, because yeah. Marvin was helping him with what he was doing and he took separated himself a bit from him. Yeah. Sorry, someone else said something then. Or maybe it was someone in the background. So quick question. Mulder finds Waterworld, Poseidon. He, he clones Skinner and Johnny Quest. Never heard from Johnny Quest again, did we? He was the asshole one. R remember? We never heard from Luke again either. No, I thought it was Bender. Luke and Bender both disappeared. We never hear from them again. Yeah, I thought that Luke got blown up. Um, Maybe, I don't know, but I we don't never know, hear from I know Bender they went the after end. Bender. I know they went after Bender, didn't they? Like they sent they sent um, someone after him because I made a note on it. Um, uh, honestly, some of those sort of side storylines got so convoluted at times I couldn't follow it all. Um, I did love the science with, the, with uh, Poseidon, like there's Kraken and... Oh, yeah, that was interesting. Great monsters and the floating mats and everything. That was very cool. My only problem with that storyline was that I felt like the the cultures that had chosen to come there had chosen to go there because it was going to be similar or give them a feeling similar to the cultures they'd come from. And to create the in-the-air um, cities felt really contrary to that. And I know that it was a whole storyline that they did about around that that was completely different, but I, it made me a little sad. <laughs> I think it was more that they were the only countries that wanted to go somewhere where it was completely water. Like yeah. It wasn't so much about it was like their home world or anything like that. It was that oh, they were oh, no. people who were New Island yeah. living. This is they... purely coming from me. It wasn't from the book. It was me entirely. Oh. I wanted it to be cultural. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, I remember what else I said. Um, the one thing that I thought was interesting, which they didn't address as much, but um, time zones on the planets. Mm. Yes. Um, and how the day and night cycles yeah. work. Yeah. And, like, there was, there was um, I think it's in book three, there's big complaining about the gravity on one of them. Yeah. But there would have been gravity issues on all of them. Yeah. Like, yeah, it would be unlikely they were the same. Yeah. Like, I think... After reading I, I think I said it was an eight percent gravity that was really affecting them, but it was like was it Vulcan was ninety seven percent the size or one point zero three the size of Earth? And so I'm like, well, it's going to have a greater or lesser gravity, right? It's going to yeah. affect you. So 
Uh, Which is, yeah, like uh, having not that long ago read all, all the Expanse books, they, they talk about that a lot. Yeah, because it's, like, it it's a the big way they thing about yeah. how gravity is on different places and how it affects different people and, and um, you it know, like when they're, on a, when they're on a planet that's got a higher gravity, they talk about how tired they get really easily and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It sort of wasn't really mentioned in this book. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially between uh, Vulcan and Romulus because maybe more in book three when they got rid of the irritant Cranston, that was a brilliant piece where they're like, we just need to get rid of the irritant. The whiskey? No, Cranston. <laughs> I just remember that being a great line. Um, like there's family on both planets. Like how do you deal with not just the time zone of the planet that you're on but the one that you're next to that's got a different size and gravity and the mm -hmm. dust, you know, I was like, I, wow. I, I, I wonder whether, because it was from Bob's perspective and he's like a computer, so he doesn't give a shit about time zones. Maybe, yeah, maybe maybe that's why it wasn't. Well, he doesn't care much. about any kind of day-night cycle. No, like, it's like, oh. well, I can be awake 24-7 and I can, if, if I'm bored, I can slow time down or, like, or speed time up or, like, yeah. slow time down if I need more thinking time so for him it probably didn't make any difference at all you know like if he had to wait six hours to talk to someone on the other planet because they're all asleep he'd be like well I'll just you know go into that mode where everything speeds up and it'll feel like five minutes to me and so, that's a that's an interesting thing about the um the day length because you know we know about things like circadian rhythms and and no. that diurnal nature that we have <laughs> And if it's too far out of that roughly half day, half night kind of thing that we have on Earth, that's going to affect people. So you have to either pick planets that have a very similar day cycle or look for a technological thing. It's like, okay, you just stay inside in, in yeah. like super dark for this amount of time. Well, that leads me to the question regarding clown car planet, um, so KKP versus uh, slash quilt, as it gets called, which is the satellite of the Jovian Big Top, which is where everybody ends up moving to. Um, they said both the orbit and the axes are 90% of normal. I can't quite imagine that. I want I put here a big thing, discuss, help me understand what that is like. <laughs> it means so that, that would the mean seasons a similar year similar and a similar... And, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Similar what? seasons... Right. Like as they travel around like that tilt. Yeah. Um, similar year length? Similarly, well, maybe. maybe. Or day length? Day, day length is probably more important than year length. Yeah. Because year is really quite arbitrary, really. Yeah. It's and so it, it's more about how, many, on how it sits. It what, what, what the, the revolution on its axis is mm. and what the tilt of the axis is. So I think it's... Uranus because it tilts like quite oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it spin backwards? It spins in the opposite direction and it's tilted almost yeah. 180 it's, degrees. So we're like yeah. this and it's like this kind of and it rotates yeah. like this right. Yeah, because um, yeah, you know? it's, yeah. it's, it's ring system is like we would see it as vertical on the yeah. same plane. So yeah. Poles, yeah. Its poles are still there. But it's yeah. like this, so it yeah, doesn't. It's, it's day and night. Yeah. Isn't, is there another planet that goes backwards? I'm not sure. I'm sure there's another planet that, that spins completely yeah. backwards. So I think this has been one of those discussions with Game of Thrones about how they end oh. up with. Um, yeah, no. George just went. I'm just going to do weird ass seasons, and then all people all try to. Yeah, that's a fantasy. Get science, <laughs> get yeah. science to to match up with it, and it's like there's not really any science to match up with no, it. No, George think wasn't thinking like science when he wrote it; he just made that shit up. I, I yeah, just have a really long up. winter. It's okay. Calm down, Kirsten. <laughs> it was just the point I was trying to like say no, 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 like, that idea of oh, there's still a day and night cycle, but the seasons don't operate in the same way yeah. because this, yeah. the way it rotates is completely different. So yeah. thus you're not going to have the way you go around the sun is going to be, you know, you're going to have a lot more exposed for a lot longer. And each, you know. I was watching or reading recently that was a similar thing, like the, the seasons. Um, there's a real, a really good example. Oh, is the, it's um, um, the Brandon Sanderson one, the one that was in The Way of Kings. Oh, okay. Like, yep. They're like, we might have winter down there, we might have summer, and then we might have spring, and we don't fucking know. 
The um, other one that's really good to look at for that is the three body problem by Shishu. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It, that's a really good one around the different seasons problem in terms of how it works. Yeah, yeah, that was really interesting. The, the, the three, the system of three and then they were like. Because it had three suns and yeah. how the planet worked and moving around that and they didn't know how to solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah, whereas, um, like, I think the Brandon Sanderson one is very similar to the Game of Thrones one where it's like, we've got this weird-ass system where seasons can last at a, who knows how long. We don't know which season this. You might have summer and then winter and then spring and then summer again and then autumn and it's not in any particular order and not any, and I don't think there was any scientific basis behind it. He was just like, this is an interesting world. I'm going to write it like this. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. <gasps> Guys, uh, it's done. Yeah. 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 I think I'm doing some more outside stuff, but officially, in terms of the actual pattern, this is it. <laughs> Have we been yeah. in there? Excellent. Uh, I think okay. <laughs> Moving along. That's very exciting. Moving along. Um, <laughs> so Sarah is not interested. <laughs> I am, it's a blanket. I'm just okay. realising it's 10.35 and we've still got to get to my notes from the third book. Oh, um, so, blah, 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 blah. so we talked about those. Um, I made some interesting notes. I think we already we already talked about the rabbits on Vulcan. I made a note here on Vulcan releasing rabbits. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was like, like, that's never gone it's badly before. Yeah, it, it's worked people so more. well everywhere else. Yeah. Um, Look, just it, because it didn't work here doesn't mean that it won't work anywhere else. You know, other than the fact that it's never really worked worked anywhere else. Yeah. Um, I thought, uh, just a side note, that the vehement outpost in NZ, my family had a beach house not far from the spy station there. <laughs> so that's you, I'm imagining. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, great line, replacement for whiskey or paint thinner, mm -hmm. time would tell. I love that line. <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting. Pets, the bobs have them, but no one else does because, of course, they would have been eaten. So I thought. That was an interesting point. Like Bob always has pets, but no one else does in this world that we know of. Like nobody's transporting their pets in stasis mm, pods. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, as something that I mean, they I, really don't have the option to do that. No, that's well, a lot of people that would have it's, it's, it's definitely a first world. Pets are a first world thing. Um, yeah. You know, through time is that you need to be able to sustain you need to be eat well enough that you can then have enough food to feed another, you know, yeah. without yeah. getting anything back from it, like just the enjoyment of its company. It's a very much a first world thing. That's why yeah. the explosion of pets in Asia um, has kind of happened because it's it was very foreign for a long time because it just wasn't the ability to say, we have enough calories to just have animals for the pleasure of it. Mm -hmm. um, so that I thought was interesting. Homer going. Uh, Riker crying and Charles sobbing and yeah, I just yeah, it was very like oh, sad. That really upset me. It yeah. really upset me too. And not as much as him keening when um, oh, he was woken up. Like that was. Yeah. I actually oh quite like. I quite I I yeah no that was worse for me when he woke up because yeah. when he went it was his decision and he was like yeah I can't yeah. Anymore yeah. and I want to go. Mm. I, I, and that's it. I respected his warm. decision, but I was and angry that happened. that's what had happened to him. That was it. Like I completely understood it and I respected his decision, but I was upset because it had gotten to that for him. But I understood why. Like I got it. Like he'd just be the nightmares, the peers, what do you call it? Post traumatic stress syndrome. The oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. would have been yeah. awful. And being a replicant, you forget nothing. Like yeah. I think Riker talked about, like you just Things don't fade with time when you're a replicant. So it would have been yep. awful for Homer. So And that whole thing of him being trapped inside his body and yeah. doing things that he couldn't stop himself from doing. And I, I suspect oh. it was like, well, he doesn't refer to him as number two. He's so straight and narrow. That's not hard. That seems really weird. And then they started talking was like, I think it's Homer. I saw, I saw it coming quite a lot. Yeah, when they too. started blowing up the donuts, I was like, and they were saying, you know, that Homer was the only one who knew how to number like, oh. Mm. It's, because it's I was also I was cranky because I was like you you had this hacking attempt and you were just like okay well it didn't get through whatever like fucking find out who was trying to hack you because what if they hack you mm. even better in the next round like why are you being so blase about this mm. do something about this now and then when it happened I, I knew it was coming because I was like well 
they wouldn't have had all these hacking attempts if something wasn't going to eventually get through and you're not invincible. And I knew, like, well, Bob can't be invisible. Something's going to happen. But he couldn't see it and it was frustrating me that he wasn't taking it more seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's an interesting thought about ethics in this kind of world. Mm. Uh, it's not so much of an issue, I don't think it's so much of an issue uh, for the Bobs because... I think they'd be pretty clear about what they would say is okay and what's not. But if they weren't in control of themselves, for example, if there were humans in control of them and you had something like that where they've decided to end their life, but there's a backup. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why Homer got rid of his backups. Yeah, exactly. But imagine in a world where that's not an option, Mm. And the humans can just go, eh, we're going to bring you back anyway. Mm. That's, that's kind yeah. of It's kind up. of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Where you don't even have that as an option. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's not so much being brought back that, that that's not it. That's not ever a way out. Yeah. 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 Um, so a couple of others. We met the others in this series. Mm-hmm. We'd seen, uh, was it Mario? had been to, I don't know which system, where they'd basically stripped it completely mm. and the ants and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that was in this book at the beginning. And then when yeah. I meet the others, I thought this was um, kind of an insightful quote and kind of as a, there can never be too many of us. There can only be too little food. And I thought, so true, so true. <laughs> as far as yes. parties are concerned, <laughs> there could yes. never be too many of us. Just not enough food and booze. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't really fault the others. Then they're thinking there. I kind of agree. <laughs> um, watching the pav be f- harvested must have been horrendous. Oh god, yes. Um, just awful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did make this note because I thought Mel, you would like this, and I, I just went. <laughs> The Pav wore clothes, but only for pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so true. And was a perfect one. I think that it probably didn't register as well as it should have, but, yes, that is, a, that is an excellent quote. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was what it was for. So that, those were my notes on number three. Um, uh, sorry, number two. I've got more notes on number three. Um, and Can sorry. I just mention, since we're on the PAV at the moment. Yes, I let's leave the PAV. I actually was really interested in their um, family dynamics. Yeah, they seem to have uh, a living together kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was really cool. I thought that was quite interesting and enjoyable. The eating yeah, sounded the terrifying. Dinner, yeah. yeah, the dinner was a <laughs> stuff with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember who it was. It was Jacques was like, count them afterwards, make sure that they're all there. <laughs> yeah. But I, I kind of like those factors because I I felt like the, um, disp- dis- apart from appearances, I felt like the Deltons were a little bit too human-like. Yeah, mm. I couldn't imagine them as bat things. I just no. imagined cavemen. I kept, I kept, I kept, until he, until it, like the, 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 the narration went, reminded us that they looked like bats, I kept sort of picturing them as early humans, like Neanderthal. Yeah. I of, thought yeah. of Planet of the Apes. Bigger ears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, like, like, yeah. But they're still, yeah, very humanoid. Whereas, like, whereas, I just think the, if they kind of stopped, like, it'd be like, he actually did a different, a different thing, but like Bob would describe it as something like raising his eyebrows, even though he wasn't actually raising his eyebrows; he was doing some other thing. But yeah, which it was, was the equivalent. It was the equivalent of raising eyebrows, so that's how he kind of described yeah. it. So you kind of forgot that it was different. Yeah, yeah. The pairs were quite different. Yeah, and and um and in particular in things like around their social dynamics and how they did things. So yeah. I thought that was really good. I actually really would have preferred to spend more time getting to know With the them. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I really yeah, like them too. And again, I was like, oh, why were these freaking Deltons? Like mm-hmm. the Pav were, ba- they had libraries. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was so cool, and I really liked when he when Jack worked them up and their questions and like why why is it what am I talking to an eight year old like kind of yeah so <laughs> get on to yourself Jack. you know I was kind of annoyed on their behalf because I'm like yeah. they're gonna ask questions they know they why not that's the only thing they've got yeah yeah you know, and, and I, I loved 
how questioning they were of his motivation. Like, yes. why on earth would you be helping yeah. your why would you help us? What is, yeah. what's in it for you? And so I always saw them as the meerkats. I didn't yeah, see I them. Yes. That, so. I couldn't see them as, you know, the, <laughs> so I didn't, like, with the Delta. Specifically the meerkat from the ad that compare the meerkat compare <laughs> the market. That one. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Oh, what, that's what funny. Was I didn't name? think of that. No, Haja, I, can't. Haja, Haja? Oh, I can't remember. Haja? But I did think it made sense for them and the people to be like, yeah, thanks, thanks, Bob, but can you just, like, go away now? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we get that you were helping us and I, we yeah. don't really understand why you did and that. It was but nice. We probably nice prefer learning. you to go away. It was also <laughs> a nice juxtaposition learning from what, Bob had essentially done with the Daltons, and that yeah, he didn't learn. Ask okay, him I'm probably if they want off. him, mm-hmm. you know, like, do you want me to be here? He never mm. asked, and that's yeah, you yeah, know, part of the problem. Whereas you know, Jacques was like, well, we're here as much as you want us to be. We just wanted to make sure that your culture, like, you're an intelligent, sentient being. Yeah, yeah. We just want to make sure that's preserved because you deserve a chance. Um, so I thought it was really cool. Um, I like a lot of how that was all dealt with in a lot of respects. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. and I think it's probably was from the learning of what Bob, you know, we shared back went wrong, you know, yeah. And they probably went, maybe, you know, maybe next time us Bob should, you know, chicken and ask. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like the Pavlot. Haja was very cool. She. Oh. Yeah, I, I just liked a lot of what happened. Yeah, I really just would have liked to have a lot more interactions with them. But yeah. in a lot of respects, it made sense also to just be like, they don't do want thing. us. Yep. Yeah. We're not yeah. intruding. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and Jack was much more able to back away because they wanted him to do than, than Bob yeah. was. Which, and what was interesting, he never took, he, he presented himself as human, He as a humanoid. He never tried to dress up trying, as a sexual yeah. meerkat, you know, yeah. like he was like, Let's not pretend I'm anything other than what I am. Let's not do a Jodie Foster's dad in contact. Let's, you know. Yeah. Um, well, to be fair, he didn't. He didn't present himself as. An, who Jacques uh, or Jodie Foster's dad? No, no, a, a computer in a little cradle. No, that's true. That's true. Like, here I am. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not quite who I am, but. No. But sure. I also don't think that Bob or any of his versions really thought of themselves as that way no, at all. No, I think no, they, no, no. they didn't think about it. Yeah, unless it was, thing was, unless you know. it was in that situation where they were building a new one or yeah, rebooting, like saving their copies and stuff. I think they kind yeah. of forgot that they're actually in a box. Yeah, which is probably is actually a box, which yeah. is again probably tied to his sanity. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you start thinking about that too much, you start going that. So, mm. so the Cranston <laughs> scandal. I was disappointed we didn't get more of that. This is kind of the things where there's like they build it up and then it's just kind of like the end of it. Just... There was almost too many storylines, in my opinion, overall. <laughs> yeah, but I was like the same thing with battle. So this is some of the things I've said here, like. Julia's death and Justin's birthday, we got more of this in Butterworth's funeral. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? I said here also, you know, Cranston's scandal. We spent so much time, like, getting annoyed at this guy, then we didn't find out what got him off the block. Like, yeah, like we come didn't, on. It we was weren't just, there for it. It just yeah. happened and we hear about it afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I made the same point here. All Bob's best friends on Delta are male. I made the same point that you said, uh, Mel. Like, yes. Yeah. Um, Archimedes and Buster and Arnold and yeah. he doesn't get on with Diana and no. quite yeah. care about that mm-hmm. and saying that Belinda's nice to him but you know it's just he doesn't talk to them he just sort of interacts with them very vaguely and only really around yeah. the time where one happy. of them is dying them or something yeah so yeah. I, I made a point on that as well I was like but is that Bob is it that's what I was wondering maybe yes. and Maybe it is, uh, but like he never. Uh, when you see Bob in other in in other versions, yeah, later versions as well, yeah, yeah, like like Howard is a good example of that. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other one who's on the the water planet, and I can't think of his name. Um, Marcus. Uh, Marcus. Yeah. No. Mar- Marcus? Yes, yeah. Marcus. Oh, yep. You guys are better than you, me. They're all you guys are so good at keeping the name straight. I have no, no idea. No, it's they're all Bob <laughs> to me. I'm like that Bob or this Bob. No, no, like yeah. they're all Bob. I'm just <laughs> I just like the, 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 anyway, the thing is, is that um, 
like they talk to more females in general, not all, and not always in a romantic way. So original Bob's way of really almost not interacting with females at all seems kind of strange. I kind of think original Bob was a little bit comic book guy from from The Simpsons. Yeah. Like he was just a little bit like the stereotypical nerdy guy that can't just, talk to women. And he had female friends, colleagues that were at the table yeah, with him in, in Las Vegas. Yeah, mm. yeah. I don't know. But they were very friend zoned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. They but were not, not, I'm not they were not women but, that were strong, independent, like on the same, that he saw on the same level as him. No, they were just his friends. And interestingly, she disagreed with him. So he didn't talk to her much. He ended up talking to this other guy. Yeah. Yeah. True. So, no, no, I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you, Mel. I think that Dennis e. Taylor needs to take a hard look at how he works and writes in female characters. Yeah. Uh, because I think we've there's a lot of leeway and forgiveness that we can apply here, but we're kind of saying we don't want to see it again. We want to see you working in um, yeah. some more, you know, female relationships to your character and, as you know. Yeah. A little bit worrying. Um, that leads me to a different discussion, which I can't have right now, so I can't talk about it anymore. <laughs> okay. No, this relates to Matt's pick, so I'm not allowed to go there right now. Oh, okay. Don't go there. We're on yeah. the. Uh, we're, okay. we're on the. Lock. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> we're in the homeward zone. Have you um, read it, Mel? Yeah, I read it at um, uh, end of the. It was our Christmas read. No, my Christmas read. Oh right. Okay, that was a while back. All right. Well, we'll save that conversation. Um, so. Fred from Carry On, um, I said, yeah, we've talked about this before, there's a lack of empathy for what's driving it, you know. It's just meeting war with war, which is not mm -hmm. great. Um, and, again, Bob didn't see what Riker saw. He's just gone straight to Delta Aridani. Mm -hmm. Aridani. Uh, however you <laughs> want. I, I, if you say I, one I, or the other, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I always said it as a but I think that might have been the first way they said it. And then, yeah, he said Delta Aridney in the book in book one, and then Delta Aridani in book two. I think I kind three. of forgot about Aridani and just remember. Aridani's how I've always said it forever. So mm. see, and I always kind of think Aridney. Aridney doesn't sound Aridney. as romantic as Aridani. Is Aridney, 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 something? Is there a word that's like aridness or aridney? I'm just so happy because I didn't actually notice this when I was reading these books, and so I, I thought they thought were different getting, places. Yeah, I was just <laughs> really confused. I was like, "Where's this location? Oh, it's Bob." Okay, and so yeah, I just accepted it. That, that yeah, me too. I thought they were different places because they sound like they're spelled differently. Yeah, I think <laughs> aridney been, is with an e. Aridani is with an A. I don't know yeah. how to spell, but that's what I thought. Is. See, I would have said Aridani was with an I. It's funny how when you're an audio person. with an I. Yeah, or with an I. Yeah. But certainly Aridani, like, Aridani yeah. would be with an A. Yeah. So I, I've just learned, like, with these sorts of things in audiobooks, just not – with audiobooks, I don't, I don't think about things like that too hard. No. Once I've sort of got my placement, I stop thinking about it. So I just don't notice sometimes. But that was part of my problem because I about? found it really hard to place – Places, yeah, that's why I, I did it basically oh, based on Bob's more so than yeah, the other. I did too. I was like, Oh, this is that guy. Oh, yeah. you know, it was not even maybe yeah. the Bob, it was more like, Oh, this is the one with the deltons. Oh, yeah. no, that's yeah. the one with once that's they the found one with the planet. Warmer planet. Oh, that's the one with the yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They found the planet and they gave the planet an actual fucking name, and they're like, Now I know. Although I was saying that, I did make a note epsilon here. Epsilon squared, I used to get epsilon squared and delta and well, and then I was like, Oh, delta's got a delta. And yeah, that yeah. I, I every chapter I started off with just listening and going, okay, where are we? I don't remember this name. Where are we? Oh, okay, this storyline got it because it yeah, for me, that I, was me. Like, unless it was a really like well known Bob, i.e., Bob Riker Howard, that sort of thing, yeah. I wouldn't know where I was based on it, even Bob, and yeah. um, I couldn't even place the the planets or the systems. So it was always just storyline. Yeah, me too. I was like, oh, this is the one with these people in it. Okay, I'm, I know where I am now. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if I'd read it instead of listened, I would have noticed those things more easily. I absolutely would have, but I, I, that's, one, that's what I'm saying. With, with um, audiobooks, I've learned to let those things go. Yeah, you kind of have it, to. 
yeah and which is why like when i discovered the time differences between everything mm -hmm. which was so late like seriously it was like the last third of the last book it's ridiculous how long it took me to notice this because i don't pay attention to those things well, no like they're telling you like, that at the beginning and you're like i'm just gonna zone out while you tell me the yeah, date, the yeah, thing is, the date like, you don't remember month no. it was when they started the last chapter yeah. Like what year it was so you're like yeah okay uh, this is the next well, thing it was kind of like star trek when they're like star date a bunch of numbers that mean nothing to me okay yeah. <laughs> i had the same problem with um the night circus because i started the night circus as an audio book and it took me forever to realize that there was a time jump between the actual live circus stuff happening and the um what's the name of the boy who ends up taking over it all i can't remember but anyway, oh, yeah, the yeah. storyline is is set like it's it's far far in the future from all at all and i didn't notice at all no nah, i don't i read the book book and i didn't notice because i don't i'm just like yeah numbers <laughs> basically yeah. oh scared yeah, over those numbers my brain's not hard to know them. right um and that's the thing so there was a couple of points like the um sending icarus and day it can day like that mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. like i i was like I had to go back and go that happened he sent them before they did any of this stuff like that got all set up before yeah. they were in the war so <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Because it's, okay, there was no plan yet these guys were actually on their way to destroy the dyson sphere and i want to double check with matt was it a dyson sphere or a dyson swarm uh, i don't know what a dyson swarm is uh, I imagine it would be lots of things going around in a circle. Like it would be lots of satellites. It was specifically structure. noticed to be a sphere. I I'm noticed, sure but. they used the words Dyson sphere. Yeah, yeah, they did. Mm. They did. Uh, the whole point, the point of having a sphere rather than a swarm, is that you need to contain the energy from the star that you are encompassing. Yes, like, I also you, did. If you kind don't of have a cover then a whole bunch of energy escapes. I've ever I've been seen Dyson Sphere's been pretty much debunked as something that can't actually happen though. Yeah. Basically. Uh, the yeah, basically. Resources. But uh, like I noticed it was well. definitely a Dyson Sphere because after reading Ringworld I now noticed that sort of thing because Ringworld has been proved like the concept that came from that has been proven to be even less likely to work than an actual Dyson Sphere. Yeah. Um, but I heard that, I think it's because I was watching something about this later and I just wanted to double check because they said a Dyson Swarm has more possibility because it's not trying to harness all of it, it's just trying to get in a better position to harness what it can. So mm. that idea of setting a network of... Mm. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I've never heard of it before, but it does make sense. Um, I think it's the PBS channel, it's an Australian guy. Um, oh, that one. Oh, yeah. the PBS oh, space, space Time. Space time. But yeah, space time. Yeah. To I'm me, like, if you're little. going to have swarms, doesn't it make sense to just do spheres then instead of doing. No, no the amount of resources that... exponentially. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I think what, it, what it allows you to do is how big energy it. Is, is to collect energy and store it versus what a Dyson sphere does, which is basically having a habitable living space on the inside of the sphere. Mm. Well, I suppose Whereas, in some respects it would work better for this culture because they tend to live in, on the indoors, so it's not like the overexposure to sunlight wouldn't be so much of an issue. No, they like mm. to, yeah, yeah. But but it also does make you kind of go, they seem like if anyone's going to make a swarm as their, mm. you know, like it seems like that would make total sense as far as the way they're. Yeah. Oh, but I'm pretty it. sure it was the Dyson Sphere because I remember noticing No, they do. That. They yeah. do it say is. the word Dyson Sphere. So yeah, fine. but I just want to double check that they were building an entire sphere, but that explains the whole need. That's why it explains right. why That's they why need to strip like mine, mine, yeah. strip mine everything. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also because they wanted to maximise because they're um, a colony. Uh, sorry, a hive. Hive. Hive yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah, they wanted to maximise and have as much space as possible too. Yeah. I did kind of picture them very Borg-like. Sorry, very what? Borg. Borg. Oh, yes, absolutely. That was just big ants in my head. Yeah, yeah no, like, I yeah. mean more like their technology. Oh, right. Yeah, no, they were like, just 
I just saw him like, you know. Although the little the ant things like, I kind of thought of as like the replicators, replicators. from Star Stargate. I don't know if you guys uh, have watched Stargate. I just saw them kind of like a little bit like ants with that that thing from The Simpsons where the freedom, horrible freedom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found the concept behind the fact that they, both cultures, so humans as well as the others, had developed the idea of the printers. Um mm. To me, like they talked about some of the concepts in this as being just like this would absolutely become a universal idea, i.e. the von Neumann probe, which I'd never heard of before this. No, book. I then, hadn't either. And then also the concept of the printers. And I'm like, okay, I can see where you're going with the printers at the very least, but the probes don't see, seem like just as such a, like a complete, you know, absolutely everybody would end up there kind of space. Um, but regardless, I was sort of like, seems a bit too close to each other. <laughs> hmm. I think it's the von Neumann probes as we move towards, well, here's a question. He even puts it in book one, he talks about whether he's a Chinese room of a, which he isn't, which is I have a whole lot of, you know, pre- pre like ways to answer stuff like there's ai we and you know this is why we love this box because we talk about this ourselves there's mm -hmm. a difference between ai and sentient yes you know exactly. and that's yes. that's the that's the question is that i i thought what i liked about this is i i like the idea of my knowing pros but actually having a sentient ai running yeah. it suddenly made the whole thing make much more sense whether yes. it's possible or not i don't know but having just an ai that going around and like then it doesn't what's the point yeah, yeah what's the yeah. point whereas if it's sentient it's another it's a being within itself yeah, yeah. um and that i got and then yeah. i got really excited and i just think this is the most exciting way i've ever you know could have found that had described what mm. the machines could do probes could do mm. um I think that whole thing, I had to look up the Fermi paradox and um, did others uh, know what, what that meant before this? Because I, I didn't, but then I realised right. what it meant after. Um, uh, I don't know what that means. It's possible I've heard of it. but uh, I'll don't. get Matt to explain because he's always much more succinct at these things than I am. Fermi paradox is basically the thing about, like, if why why we don't see any existence of alien uh, yes, civilizations. Okay. I do know what you like, mean and there's there's multiple reasons why either we're the only ones mm -hmm. or you get to a certain point in your evolution and you destroy yourselves mm -hmm. or you get to a, a certain point of evolution and then you technologically evolve beyond the capacity for other civilizations at a lesser technological level uh to detect you because so, your yeah. science is too far advanced so mm -hmm. q like or something along those lines yeah, so it's basically the idea of like, if we're, it, why do we not see evidence why have of we not intelligent life? Yeah, yeah, in the universe. Yeah, and I have my own opinion about this, which is where I, which is why when I heard all this, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I've thought, I didn't know there was a whole rationale to things that I've been thinking since I was yeah. seven, mm. um, and reached my own conclusions on. So I thought that was really interesting. I looked at it and went. Oh yeah, I've had this debate with myself, and I've worked out my own. Yeah. <laughs> Another one is that um, that that they have a, a point. Well, sort of, but it's more I of like decide. a self-preservation mm -hmm. um, prime directive. Is that interaction yeah. with other intelligent life forms don't necessarily always work out very well? Yeah. And they're like, and so you it's know not what? A good we idea might just to keep to ourselves. Yeah. 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 Well, um, that's a very interesting concept coming from. I'm like, from can we just not? Like, there might be aliens out there. Can we just, we, you know, can we just not? Like, <laughs> maybe the, it could be great if um, we run into some aliens that we're not going to end up fighting with. But considering we can't seem to fight, can't seem to not fight with other people of our own species. Yeah, it kind of makes me go. And when we do go, let's just avoid this altogether. And, and when we do go to places that oh, people happen to be, we tend to fuck everything up and spread diseases and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, ruin yeah, either the either we're going to be either yeah. we're going to be the um <laughs> like the Incans or we're going to be the Spanish. But either way, it's not cool. Yeah, I was going to say the British and the Indigenous people of Australia, but you know, <laughs> it's the same, same thing. In different, same. Uh, places. Yeah. <laughs> See, um, I, th I think a lot of this stuff I started thinking about after contact where I was just like, mm. who knows what people out there like would be like. So, 
I, mm. I take, so my personal opinion is that this shit's hard. It is mm. hard to do any type of space travel. It's hard, right? Yeah. Mm. And I think it's, and it's hard to have beings, you know, like I take whoever the, the, the guy was um, in the conference, the magical guy, Guypers or whatever, magical, I mean, imaginary guy, he was talking yeah. about um, Earth-like planets will have, <clears throat> equivalent Earth-like planets. Jovian life will be similar on Jovians, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's yeah. entirely possible and true and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I just think at the end of the day that, you know, it is hard to travel mm -hmm. anywhere away from your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and communication between... Like, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, look at that movie Arrival. Like, look at, look at the communication in Arrival and, and you kind of go, well, it could be even completely more alien even than that yeah like the idea of communication by a visual means yeah. makes sense to us yeah so i i i actually take the line i don't know whether there's cre uh, beings out there that are as technologically advanced if not more technology advanced i just think this shit's hard yeah. and like trying to guess why we haven't met anyone is because this shit's hard it is yeah. hard to travel around the but it, it is really hard. hard to make and any assumptions when you're the only yeah sa the sample size is one yeah, yes. yeah. but right. I just and I anything we think is believe, probably wrong I also yeah. refuse to believe this is like my opinion is it we can't be the only time it happens we may be the only time it's happened in this period mm. in time and we might mm. miss you know yeah. it's happening elsewhere but mm. the fact is you know even if I just think this shit's hard and if yeah. we do yeah. manage to leave our solar system, let alone enter another one. Maybe we'll find some of the answers. Maybe we'll find, you know, ships yeah. left in stasis, you know, or um, what were those those solar wind power machines from um, mm -hmm. from what's his face's uh, novel, Crazy Eddie? I think pretty, uh, pretty solar Eddie, sailors. Crazy Larry, Larry Nivens, yeah. Sorry. Solar sailors. Yeah, and they, they were just the left. Solar wind and yeah, and then they were just left. And then they, if they bumped into somebody, then they would kind of come mm -hmm. alive. Yeah. So, you know, you don't know. I just think mm -hmm. this shit's hard. So there's my personal um, I think, <laughs> Yeah. I, I think it's, it's beyond even hard. I think sometimes it's probably just beyond our comprehension. We have no yeah. idea of, of yeah. what could possibly yeah. be out there. Yeah, agreed. I think we, we can only really think, see things now in context. And yeah. And I enjoy the stories regardless, but I'm also mm. realistic about the fact that they've probably got nothing to do with what reality would be like if we did actually bump into another race. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. I love yeah. that idea though, which you shared of like another race just going, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> yeah. This guy's a bad news. <laughs> just going, yeah. no, yeah. you guys are yeah. fucked up and we want none of that. It's like it's like me and the Kardashians, right? I'm like, no, back away, back away, back away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I remember a, a Star Trek Next Generation book that I read like when I was a teen and the concept of the aliens that they bumped into was such that we couldn't even actually visually take it in. It hurt us to look oh, at wow, them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, yeah, that's probably more likely to be what's wrong with mm -hmm. anything else. Yeah. Something like that where we just can't even interact yeah. with them because the way we are built doesn't allow mm -hmm. for it. Well, we don't yep. see all the colours. Yeah. Yeah. That was so part of the problem. If we have another creature that's a dark colour that we can't see, mm -hmm. you know, yep. red colours and ultraviolet colours, then... The, the thing I loved about it was <laughs> their way to solve it was to actually use um, blind people. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So I was like... And not like, I mean, they used Geordie a little bit in the beginning because, you know, visor and all of that bullshit. But really, in the end, the solution was blind people. And I was like, yes, that is so brilliant. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I love this writer. I don't know who they are. I don't remember what the book was, but it was really good. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, so here's a question for the group because we're talking about finding other places and Von Neumann probes and stuff. So Justin made a, a comment to Will. He said, not many people, I just don't think many people will choose replication. It was mm. his observation. And admittedly, you know, people had their stasis pods, which we don't have right now. Yeah. So um, that also seems to me like a, I don't know how long or far away, but we don't have a need to figure out how to keep people in stasis. So I don't know if it's really being looked into. Matt, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there's, there's different yep. applications for it, but there's not, not a whole lot of 
um, beyond maybe like I know there's medical reasons. You know, if people have to be in, um, yeah, like in, it's like a, a medical coma, coma. Yeah. 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 or a coma, or you want to get someone so cold and so slowed down to do a transplant. Like that often yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah. But it's not. Yeah, we don't have long-term long like, reasons to do it no. for long term. Exactly. So I don't think we've invested into it. But um, if we uh, ever want to, if we can't ever figure out faster than light, it's the only other option for visiting other stars. Well, that's yeah. it, right? So that's that's or, the other. No, thing it's that, not the only other option. Generational ships are another option. Which yeah. I think is what I, you know, that's what happened in the most Interstellar. They did they did generational ships. Mm. Yeah, and and um. That's what I think we'll end up doing if we have Which to, require you know. a much larger outlay at the start because mm-hmm. you've got to be able yeah. to well, that was have all the resources. These support. people, you have, to have a, you have to have community. Like there has to be a life and a reason. Like life yeah. has to go on. There has to be. And that was why I thought it was interesting in the expanse when it was the Mormons that were going to do that. They had the generational They had the generational ship. And it's yeah. like I could totally see the Mormons doing that because they oh, have yeah. such an insular kind of culture and, and community that you could totally see it actually working for them. Yeah. Except yeah. for the fact that, you know, they kind of came and took the ship off them. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. What was that? I said they came and took their ship off them. They were like, sorry, we, we uh, need this. We need this. Did you anyone know, else feel really bad for the Mormons? I, I did. Fucking did. I was really <laughs> pissed off for them. I was like, like, so oh. excited that they invested all this money. I'm like, you bastards. All that money they, they they made their you know people pay like it's been Not more really oh, and, and then pay and so much pay. money to be in the church. <laughs> she just she just diverted it anyway. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear. But yes, that's a whole other series. But anyway, yeah. that's a whole other series. But yes, the generational ships. I could. I, I yeah. think it's probably the most likely it's the way most that likely it's going to happen. Our yeah. Current state yeah. of technology. But I think the only yeah. reason it will happen is if we go through some kind of. Like if the Earth ends ends up so bad that we have to shift people off yeah. the world, which is no, why you guys should read the Faded Sky. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I shall add it to my good read. I've got to go to bed. Okay, um, I've Bye. had a very long day. Uh, okay, that's okay. I'm talking about smelly world and heavy world now. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> you guys enjoy. Bye. I'll see you guys. Bye. I'm getting there. I'm getting Bye. there. So my question was. Would any of us choose replication? I, I think I would. I think I would because there's always the option to go, yeah, I hate this shit and I'm going to delete like myself. Homer. You know, like, yeah, like I think there's still a way out. Like if you if you started doing it and you were like, you know what, I, it's, I don't like it, you have still got an option. You know, it's not like... Um, I suppose it's still sort of, I suppose, suicide, but it's not really the same because you have lived a whole life and it's not, there's no physical, there's no physical damage you have to do to yourself to, to do You're that. And I, I kind of think, I feel like there's nothing to lose. Like if you tried it out and you hated it and then you deleted yourself, how is that worse? You were going to die anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I probably would give it a go and then if I didn't like it. But I love the idea of being able to make them like, yep, okay, so I could live forever and build myself a reality where I'm on a tropical island drinking cocktails all day and, and there's every <laughs> every book ever written is available to me in this digital form and I can read every book and only what I could probably handle that. <laughs> I could probably handle that. And then I got yeah. sick of the beach so I could go somewhere else because I could just build that other reality. And I think I probably could do it. How would you feel about replicating yourself? Like having extras of me. Yes. Mm, I don't think I could. Yeah, as long as I didn't have to interact with but, myself. So to be a good von Neumann probe, you have to be able to want to replicate. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Matt? Would you, I don't would know. you know, A, become uh, a replicant, and B, would you replicate yourself? Um, I'm going to answer that in reverse order. Um, <laughs> I think the... Um, It's interesting if it, it depends on how replication works. In the Bobiverse, you get this mm. sort of thing of uh, there's something that causes uh, differentiation with each copy, um, which, you know, to, to one extent or another essentially makes different people. 
you might be based on this on the same template, but you mm. are more or less a, di- a, a different person, very similar in a lot of respects, but a different person. Um, mm. The other side of that is if it's if you're an exact copy, then right up until that point that you uh, copied and then replicated, you're you're identical. Mm. Um, and then your experiences are the thing that will change you. Everyone's yawning, by the way. Sorry. I, know, I, know. I, know. I, I got up really early this morning. It, it's, I just, I'm just trying to get through. This was one of my questions. Yeah. yeah. And then, but it's more, it's more of like yeah. how do I think I could get on with essentially myself yeah. versus yeah, uh, a different person who is a lot like me? Yeah, and um, I think that's a scary thing. I can understand why that's why Bob – was scared because what mm. if you realize you don't like yourself? What if you yeah. realize you're an asshole? And what if, or you're and what like... if the, the 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 part of yourself that's amplified in this different version is a part of yourself that you don't like? You know, yeah. They they'd be like particular. I, I kind of saw it as they were all sort of started from Bob, but then particular parts of his, his personality were yeah. amplified in different versions of the world. thing. Is, and it's like there's a part of yourself that you don't. You're not really. Yeah. You but don't like a lot. The weird thing is, if I was if I was told, well, if you replicate yourself, they're all based on you, but they're all a bit different. I feel better about that than the all the direct clones. Too, yeah. yeah, me too. I like I always think the direct clones is like how many episodes of TV has it been like that somebody clones themselves and then they argue about who's the original and who's the clone. And, <laughs> you know, like it's that like that cliche. That whole, uh, was it, well, I think it was even fucking Riker, wasn't it? I was listening, to, I haven't watched it, but um, it was referred to in um, uh, Imaginary Worlds. They were talking about um, how. It's, it's Thomas Riker. There's an episode where yeah. um, back in the day, Riker was being up from a planet. The beaming up. And there was he, a storm he, yeah, and a yeah. second copy got created and yeah. left on the planet for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And he's like, "Oh, you know, which one is it? Oh, it's the one we have." And I'm like, "Is it? Is it really? Like, that's mm. just kind of like it's, a, it's, it's, yeah, it's like an that, academic it's question because thing. they're, they're identical at that thing. point." Yeah, and it's a classic thing of he's the clone. No, I no, he's the clone. Yeah, and yeah, and I think the big thing is is that I would get so I'd want to replicate because I get I'd get lonely, but my fear is that, and I'm going to be a bit gross. I can't figure out how. Is it that thing of like, I can't think of a bit of analogy, but that difference between having sex with someone else versus having, you know, masturbating. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, like yeah. it's yeah. someone new versus it's me and I know yeah. me, you know. It's just yeah. I know that's a bit TMI, but it's the no, only way. I, I get it. Like, but it's it. interesting though, isn't it, because it's, it's, like, it's you, but it's also not you. Yeah. And that's it. So I would feel okay about replicating if so, if I was like promised. There's always like a bit of difference. So there'll yeah. be you, but you'll find that you can actually have a good, you know, repartee with this person, and it's mm-hmm. you're not going to know what they're going to say. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, did you guys? Do you guys watch Westworld? Do you guys watch the second season of Westworld? No. I haven't seen any of it because we don't. Oh. I don't have a legitimate way to get it. You could pay for it. I could, but I don't like to do that. <laughs> it's called legitimate. No, well, okay, sorry. I, <laughs> if it's on a streaming service, I can justify the cost, but it's hard to pay for a full season of stuff that I might only watch once versus yeah. something well, like Game of Thrones where we buy it and we'll watch it over again. Which is interesting because we've only bought Game of Thrones, we'll only watch it once, whereas the Westworld, we've watched the first season twice and because we watch it and then we re watch mm. it again, you get more out of it. We'll do the same. We're doing the yeah. Westworld probably not my thing. No, but Matt will love it. Mm. Oh, it's definitely, yeah. Um, Did you read the comics? It's a comic, right? No, it's it's based on a movie. It's based on a movie from the 70s. '70s. And it's also got a huge influence from Red Dead Redemption, which is a game that I think Matt's played as well. Yeah, Yeah. no, I know. I remember a huge influence of Red Dead Redemption. Um, Every time I watch him, he was just riding a horse somewhere. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big part of it. <laughs> oh, um, I'm like, oh, right. Like, every time I'd walk in, I'd be like, "You're riding that horse again, going somewhere. Yeah, you're gonna get from A to B." 
<laughs> and then on but the every seat. And any time I, I'd like sometimes sit in there and like watch him for 10, 15 minutes and I'd be like, you've just been riding this horse for 15 minutes. Nothing has actually happened. You haven't talked very to relaxing. anyone. Yeah. Very relaxing. <laughs> There's beautiful sceneries and sunsets. Oh, Matt, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I, I, I'm not sure. I think, and that's what I imagine Bob's fear was, is they're all going to be like me mm -hmm. and I don't think I like me. <laughs> That'd be me. I'd be like. Yeah. I, I think looking at myself I would find quite difficult looking at yeah, myself all the that's time that's why i raised that question would you change if you got to if you go I where was i made oh i was made an episode i written the um oh good i'm a new version i'm gonna tweak myself i you know, totally I'm change my hair color every day for a start absolutely I'd, I'd have play green around. one day and blue another day i'd be like oh i'm gonna change my outfit and i'm gonna change my hair to match and you know, and, how I, they and I would definitely it. like yeah. take away all these stupid little bump things I've got on my face, and I'd flatten my stomach. I a bit would play me. around with my age because, like, not that I want to be younger, but I could also be older. Like, they don't do mm. that until they get the androids, and I'm like, that could be really fun. Yeah, so I could have some older people, younger people. Like, there's no. I reason. think I'd kind of do a Tonks kind of thing where I'd be like, I'm just gonna do. It. Oh, well, head yeah, head. you could do it on a whim rather than yeah. Dying. Yeah, you don't even have to do it. But like, there's that bit at the end because I don't know who's who does it. I think it's Bill who pops up and he like wearing a patch and like <laughs> band aids and everything. <laughs> He's like, we won. <laughs> it's quite funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, but would people choose replication? I think people would because I think more would than what did in the book. Like, yeah. to, like nobody wanted to pick it in the book. And I'm like, I, um, surely that would be dumb that would. Yeah, and I think that's part of the problem also. I, I think people would. Because so. there's that fear of mortality. There's like, it's a fear of the unknown. Like to me, if someone said, well, look, we know for sure that if we upload you into this computer, you're going to continue on as a person. Yeah. You might not be the same exact person you were, but you'll have a, a consciousness. Yeah. But I think if there were that many you people don't have who have raised their heads, there must be the same kind of percentage of people left who would be well, happy. Maybe it comes to religion. Like if you were really strongly religious and you believed yeah. that heaven was a thing, I could understand you going, yeah. no, I don't, want, I don't want to be replicated. I want to go to heaven. But me yeah. being not religious, I'm like, well, there could be a heaven. They might not be. I'm not, I don't have a conviction that there is. So I would yeah. probably choose the the certainty of yes, I can continue yeah. on in this other form. I think it depends on what they replicate me for. I think yeah. that opportunity to be oh, a bottom yeah. probe would be awesome. I would well, like, when he was describing seeing Saturn, when he described Big Top, yeah. and he decided I don't remember what the other Jovian where all the the blimps were. I was like, yeah, yeah. I would love that. That would mm. be. Yeah. But, Worth like, it. what about if you were like he was at the beginning and you were, like, basically a slave to this faith, you know? Like, what if you found out you're going to be, like, they said there's somebody who runs all the mining operations in the world. I'm yeah. like, if I had to, if I discover, yeah, like, to wake up and discover I'm going to be the product product manager for all, like, that would fucking suck. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. whether I'd be replicated, it depends on what the freedom, if of that but is. yeah but a lot of the bobs did that too a lot of the bobs were like there was quite a lot of bobs that went yeah i kind of don't want to do this thing that you said that I yeah do. I, I might just clone myself and make that guy do it i want to actually do something else that seems more fun yeah <laughs> well that's what that's one of the things that did surprise me is how many they got to do the war yeah <laughs> like i was like yeah, I find all these people to basically but, fall on their swords but they all basically were bob and he did have the sense of responsibility of yeah you know, maybe if it yeah. had been a different person. What are, what are the, what are the traits with. that seem to, to stick mm. versus what are the things yeah. that, that change? Yeah. But, yeah, I think that it would come down. I think religion would play a big part in whether you chose to replicate or not. Like if you were, if you were completely, um, when you completely believed that you were going to go to heaven, see all your loved ones that had died, mm. and you, you, you had complete faith in that being what was going to happen when you died, I could totally understand you not choosing to replicate. But if you don't have that faith and you don't know what your life will like, could be nothing, there could be nothing after we die, it would be worth taking the risk to replicate. Yeah. But I suppose if you replicate, your actual soul would still go to heaven 
and then you would just be a version that didn't go to heaven. You'd be a version that was replicated. Because you're a different version. You're still a copy. You got replicated. Yeah, like you're a copy a, of a real person. If there's a person. soul that goes to heaven, that would still happen if you replicated. Yeah. But um, maybe, yeah, like a, it's, it's, it's definitely an interesting question. I, I, I do think that religion would play a part in whether you would choose that or not, though. Oh, I talk quickly. Well, quickly. There's a couple more items. Um, <laughs> Neil and Herschel and the Bellerophon. I very much enjoyed that storyline. Mm. I don't know how Matt felt about, about that. Is Bellerophon a thing? That was the other one I was like, this is in reference I don't get. Yeah, I didn't it, get it either. It's a real but world. But Bellerophon has to be a thing. Um, a what reference? A real world. Like it's not a... It's not a um, I don't know how to spell it. So. Uh, I don't know how to spell it either because it's only... Bellerophon is a hero of Greek mythology. He was the greatest hero and slayer of monsters uh, before mm. Heracles. Oh, slayer of monsters. That makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And his greatest feat was killing the Chimera. Mm. There you go. There you Monster. Go. Yeah. Um, but it, but... It, it itself was kind of a Chimera, the Bellerophon. It's mm. kind of this... Like, half, I, and I always kind of pictured it as one of those round Borg ships. You know the Borg, like the you know how sphere? the Borgs have the cubes, but they had a Borg sphere as well. That's this is kind more of how like I a, a cylinder. It. Mm. Yeah. I know, but I I couldn't not see those. What were they called again? The the insect, the five mind guys. What were they called? The others. The others. The others. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't not see them as Borg like. So I saw all their technology, even though. I didn't see the the physicality as Borg like, but I saw like no. technology as Borg like. Mm. Yeah. Um. What were we talking about? The Bellerophon. I yeah. anyway. Bellerophon. I just really enjoyed. I really enjoyed that whole mystery part to it. Is it going to go off? What's in there? What's not in there? And then there. Yeah, I kept expecting something really bad to happen, and it never did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, there's going to be everything. like a whole bunch of them all in stasis and they're going to act. Yeah, like I know. I was just saying. But I enjoyed it so much. And then when they kind of realized that they had a whole ship, and I liked yeah. how Herschel and Neil, like, would, you know, didn't tell any, but like, and Bill was like telling them off. And they're like, well, you know, we wouldn't have got all the glory. And I think that's a, it was interesting. <laughs> and then I think I really enjoyed how they were like, <laughs> lowering this thing down through the clouds because I just had Independence Day in my head, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then like opening it up and getting atmosphere. And then they had all everyone puking and throwing yes, up. Yes, I thought that was oh, great. Oh, it was like, just yeah. I just enjoy I mean that sounded gross, but at the same time I just the whole thing was so that was really good. That made up for the whole Delton like Yeah, and they were kind of like um, we didn't really think about the fact that this is just a big space and we're just shoving a bunch of people in there with no gravity. And we didn't really <laughs> think about the fact that they might need toilets. Forgot about the toilets. Um, well, they just need to the office quickly. No yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I very much enjoyed that. I wanted to quickly, uh, so the other ones I wanted to check in on was uh, <laughs> the monolith on the moon. Oh, I, I was like, that. really? This is where he's just like, oh, I'm going to leave it there. Yeah. Is this, was this a 2001 thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, which is, I think, where the quote, All These Worlds, is from, because I don't think anyone else mm. has said that before I asked Mr. Clark. Is that right? I did not. I quote it to my, oh, I quote it to my cat, like things like, you know, I'll say, All these chairs are yours, except that one, and that's the one you always want to fucking sit on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then uh, what was it? Yeah, the monolith. And there was a great, there's a great one again that I want to quote. I, the, just Ray Porter's just narration was so good. Yeah, but what he says, "Your Top Gun, right stuff, all that crap." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and here again, I put this note about Butterworth's de death that it affected Riker. He talked about it, but Howard didn't say anything. And I think Howard would have been, you know, like he was a he was very sad, but I just felt like there wasn't as much reflection by Howard. He seemed to be too wrapped up in the Bridget replication issue later on. Anyway, um, mm. I just, you know, you can't get it all right, of course. Like, it's always a bit hard. But, um, yeah, I, the, you can tell I want my Mars, you know, <laughs> my Mars thing there. 
Um, I think that was the major points that I had written down. <sighs> Dyson Sphere, them blowing up. So Icarus and Day, Ick and Day, what were they shepherding? Yeah. A whole planet and a um, asteroid? No, a moon, and threw it into GL77. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, no, it wasn't GL77, was it? No, it was G it was GL77, not yeah. HOP. Yeah. Into the into the into the into star. Into the star, which was kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's not gonna it's not gonna kill the star, but it's gonna cause a bloody big. Uh, yeah. Explosion. Well, I like this. It said someday some species is going to observe that explosion and wonder what the hell is wrong with their stellar models. <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's not supposed to do that. What? Why? Why? <laughs> um, yeah, so I I actually had to re-listen to the end of the book to try and work out how the hell the Bob won. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I can't. I, I really couldn't right work now. it out, and it seemed to be that they exploded. massive radiation. Yeah, but I couldn't. Yeah, it took me a while to work it out. Out, which is well, they exploded the nukes, and then the radiation was faster than hit them faster than light, or something like that. Um, and the radiation eradicated them. Mm. Yeah, I kind of forgot about how that ended. Actually, yeah. Um, that was a major thing. And then there was the whole um, Poseidon, the Civil War and Poseidon, which mm. I enjoyed, but I don't know. I'm kind of back and forth about it. I, I felt like it was, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't seem to add a lot to the overall story of it felt very uh, separate. within the bob of this like it was yeah. fairly self-contained and there was no greater implications than just what was happening on that one planet well i i guess there was the floating planet thing that the they, city the city yeah, thing sorry which then howard and bridget took further to create um yeah. ones that they then put into um jovians and then moved everywhere i, I kind of yeah i it just felt in with the backdrop of this whole like yeah the you know the basically the future of everything is at stake with the the war against the others it felt like quite a small story and and yeah. it suffered i think in comparison to yeah. the bigger mm -hmm. stakes that's what it felt i did feel like a short story stuck yeah. in the middle of like yeah. you know how sometimes series have like little yeah. story, side stories that's what it felt like like here's here's Marcus and the Poseidon crew yeah. Here's their story told in a, a novella. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there was one thing else that I, just suddenly occurred to me and I couldn't remember what it was. Damn it. Oh, how do we feel? This is the last thought of the night. How do we feel about Howard and Bridget becoming foster parents? I forgot about that too. <laughs> what was that? I forgot about that too. I think I did too. Who did they foster? Apparently there were shuttles moving all everyone from Quilt over to um, Yeah, I totally remember. And there were some disasters and then like Bridget was loving seeing her grandchildren and you know, Nana was a great hit kind of thing and um she decided she wanted to like there was no reason with the Android bodies that they couldn't foster kids. Um mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I'd kind of forgotten about that, but I, yeah. I, I do remember it being a bit odd. I, I don't know. I kind of – well, it feels I think like, it, like this thing of, oh, now they're going to they, – they have to be a couple, so that means they have to have kids because that's what couples do. kind of felt a little bit I, – I, 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 I could see it from more from Bridget's perspective than Bob. But, sorry, yeah. not Bob, but, you know. From Howard. the Bob style, Howard. style mm -hmm. perspective, I can yeah. get the sense that he was in like he replicated himself, sure, but he didn't seem like a kid like, person. Have kids kind, a kid person, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I Whereas Bridget already had kids, her family, and yeah. She'd yeah. be like, it's... you know, I want to have that experience that again, and it's a thing that I enjoy, and yeah. I was, I was very much, I still don't know whether it's my own biases affecting how I feel about it. I'm uncomfortable with it, but I can't mm -hmm. say why, and I think it yeah. might be my own bias 
and yeah. I want to keep that in check and own up to that mm-hmm. because I'm I'm not sure. I think it's that thing of there's I don't know what it is. Yeah, one I felt like Howard did it to keep her happy and that he yeah. wasn't really consulted, and I don't agree with that whatsoever. Yeah, like, I agree. Oh, I don't think you know she's got her mindset, and I was like, hmm. like the whole yeah. point was you guys were supposed to be researching and looking at stuff and then there's that thing about having foster parents who are immortal mm. is mm, that that's interesting, yeah. it's kind yeah. of that's where my head really went which is how that do you feel about that yeah again. how yeah. do you Enough. feel that everybody's when you keep coming back they look the same age and you get older but it, it, you know? it, it would be um easy easier as a parent not having to need sleep uh, yeah, I suppose it's it, it makes me think of like the I I don't know if it's a if it's a famous quote or a quote from something that preexisted before, but it's like the idea that like a parent should never outlive their children. Yeah, mm. no, that's not and, that's yeah to hear. And yeah, it's like in this yeah, and it's like yeah, hmm. and especially yeah. if you were going to do it over and over again, like that'd be. I, it, but then I think people would... foster kids have, are in the same situation, not maybe outliving them, but like yeah. Yeah. having to give them back because they're only yeah. fostering them. Like yeah. there's a lady that goes to the I don't know if you've met a map because you probably don't go. You didn't used to go swimming on those days, but when we used to take the kids to swimming on weekdays, there was a lady that knew my mum, and she was oh, always yeah. there. She always had about four kids with her. She would have been closer to mum's age than mine, yeah. and she had foster kids. And, you know, she'd be telling me stuff, but at one point she had this newborn baby, like little, little, little baby, and telling me about the background of the, the, the story and, you know, and then she's got to give this baby back because, like, fostering in general in that sense is, like, really, really a hard thing. Yeah. And I worry, I, I, maybe this is where it comes from, this is kind of helping me work it out. I worry that you could become like the Bob who on Dalton to mm-hmm. interfering. Yeah. I um, don't think Bob's got the, I don't know, the ability to. I don't, I, I, I. He uh, doesn't seem very parental to me. I don't know yeah, what no. it is about him. Something about. Well, he never got the chance because apparently he was 31 when he got killed. It doesn't feel that way, you know. But um, yeah. maybe he didn't get the chance to feel like he wanted to have kids. Well, and he had that relationship that had broken up too. Yeah, so even if he yeah. had, had been starting to feel that it. way, yeah. he, you know, like there's plenty of people that don't have kids not because they don't want them but because they never got the relate. you know, they wanted to have mm-hmm. the relationship mm-hmm. before they had kids and then yeah. The, yeah. the relationship never happened so the kids never happened. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I the other thing that struck me about the whole Howard um, Bridget thing and maybe I just need to look at the timestamps to work out where it is but it felt like they weren't involved in the war at all yeah and it yeah. very much felt like after after Bridget um, was replicated how it went into retirement like they went into mm-hmm. retirement they were living yeah. out of twilight years and big top and I think that's the other thing is that I and this is my bias and I'm admitting this now is like I'm not sure people in retirement are necessarily going to be or should, you know, like that's a really hard thing for them to be foster parents. But, again, maybe it's my expectations of human people who. Mm. I was going to say, because, like, what is, the, what is the concept of twilight years and retirement when you effectively. When, you've got oh, when you're immortal, exactly. Yeah. This is what I mean. Like, I think it's my own biases. Yeah. I think that I need to own up to that and that in this situation that's not necessarily true. Um, yeah. But they're not like, well, these are my supposed to be my resting years and. Now I'm, I'm, I it, think you raised a really like, good point about needing sleep and patience. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I don't, I mean, I'm only judging it from my parents, but they struggle. They need a lot of naps. They don't have mm-hmm. the energy. I mean, they're a lot older and yeah, they like the grandkids, but they yep. like them as grandkids. They don't, yeah, I completely oh, and, appreciate and, really, and respect that they don't want to be, they've done their time. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. They're and like, really, like, I respect that. You only do that shit because you have to. Like, you yeah. know, yeah. you only do the getting up 
in the middle of the night and the know. dealing with the not yeah. sleeping and all that shit because you're like, this is my that, job. Yeah, I got the not sense that, that you enjoy it. <laughs> Bridget and was wanting to send up some kind of orphanage thing and then I don't know what it would be like, but, you know, I just feel like orphanage, orphanages are really, like, hard mm. to get right. <laughs> yeah, even when you're well-meaning, yeah. yeah. I, exactly. Like I think they're set up in times of crises, understandably, and that it's traumatic for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, this is a time of crises with a whole lot of kids left without parents. But I don't know. Um, then, that my question is: Is are replicants really the right people to be doing this? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I these are just all the questions that are in my head. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like that end to everything. It felt too much like a fucking princess story. Like she gets that's what mad. that's what rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. she get too mad, and now they get to have kids. You know, happy ending. I'm like, uh -huh. why doesn't yeah. she get her man, and she gets to look at the fucking wildlife baby yeah, in the What's wrong with well, that? Like she just do a science. Why does that? I think yeah. that was what rubs me the wrong way about yeah. it more than the the concept of the replicants raising children. It was more like the one female character you had and it all came down to wanting and to raise children again, even though she's mom. already done that. And yeah. it's like, really, yeah. you don't think she's going to be like, I want to study my academics and do my my ecology well, stuff. Yeah. And maybe that's right. her point. Maybe she's I'm not going to do this for you, but maybe it was just that opportunity because she is like a mortal. So maybe she's like, this is a need. Take a break. I'm, yeah. So I think like, this is a need right now on Big Top. I don't have to do this forever because I'm immortal. But this is a need, and we are, we are. Our first imperative is to serve humans. Yeah. So I am going to serve and help the children who have been left parentless. But it doesn't have to be forever. This isn't like no. maybe that's something I'm having to wake myself up to. But I think from an author point of view, like yeah. just having a shuttle fucking disaster in the first place. He wrote that in. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, as a why did he write it in? From a character perspective, I think it makes sense. But from the fact that this is really the only main character mm -hmm. that's female and they've made her, like, you've reduced her to the mother figure, I think yeah. is what I'm struggling with. Yeah. Not because I think it's going against what would make sense for her character to do, but because there's such a lack of female characters. Yeah. And then the one key female character you have got, you go, let's put her in a stereotypical role. Yeah. It, I think it kind of just rubs me in the wrong way a little bit. But, yeah. yeah. I agree. And that's where I'm going to end things. Oh, Overall, We did quite a good discussion. We stayed on, on track that? pretty well. well. We didn't stay on topic very well. Um, we did. We way, did. Way we better than we some usually. of them. Most um, of them, like, sometimes we talk for, like, 20 minutes and then we're, like, off, to off topic for the whole rest of the thing. So this uh, is a I was just going to say, like, I, I think I enjoyed books one and two almost equally with each other. But mm -hmm. book three was a noticeably lesser experience. Still, still good. Mm -hmm. Still enjoyed it. But book I noticed one consciously and two that I did not like, enjoy it as much as the other. Books. Yeah, book one and two are like the same book for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And book three because there's some very key storylines. Like we get the Bellerophon, which I very much enjoyed, but we also get the whole uh, civil war. Yeah. Um, and the Civil War just felt like another, like it's a, like a novella that got stuck into this. So, it felt yeah. Kind of tacked on. Yeah. And there was an awful lot of freaking tactical war stuff. And that's just not my bag. But yeah, I listened through it. And, that know, stuff I was more interested in, but that's because I enjoy it my, my when it's peppered so through things, like when they did the whole Madeira stuff. But this was a major part of it. And that, as I said, I had to re listen to it. I kept, kept tuning out. <laughs> like, yeah. But I, it was a great series, um, and I will read his. I've got his latest book, actually. I think I already bought it on Audible because oh. my daughter's doing it again. I didn't know there was one. Yeah, so. It's not a Bob book, though, right? No, not a Bob but book. Different. Oh, what a big, excuse me, big chats. Um, <sighs> oh, no, maybe it's Artemis that I bought. Oh, oh that's interesting have been. from yeah. Mel. That's <laughs> Rosario Dawson doing that one. Oh, yeah, really? I'll be interested to hear. Yeah, because I, I think it's a I female read, lead. I actually, read, yeah, it is. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, Artemis is a female lead. But apparently, um, that's controversial. Not the female lead, but the book. Oh, is yeah, this Artemis? That's yeah. my pick. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh. That's why I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> oh no. I'll be interested Sorry, to Mel. hear what Mel has to say. I because... haven't listened to it yet. I haven't read it yet either. I have I read, read it. Closer I to did the time. not I did not enjoy it as much as The Martian, but then I was like, maybe I have had really high expectations because of The Martian. Did you, like, without spoilers, obviously, did you have any major problems? It felt very YA to me would be my yeah. biggest issue with it, but I didn't. Okay. But we liked and YA. I, I liked the, the end role. better than the beginning. Um, I'm, getting, I'm going off YA, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling with it lately. Yeah, I mean, Six I like crows. since the cruise. What happened on the Six, cruise? Six of crows. Oh, oh no, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> oh, I know you missed the cruising. You took a couple of <laughs> no. I was like, what did you read? <laughs> I think I'm just. I think I'm just over the romance angle in the in so many YA things, and it didn't really even have that. It was just some. I would describe it as the voice felt YA. Like the voice mm. that it's written in, so YA. Is it is a YA voice? I thought. I thought. Yeah, was like yeah. The character is yeah. quite young. Yeah, I'm not um, sure if she's meant to be actually below. You know, not adult. I think she is an adult, but it's the um, young it's the adult. Dorothy Taylor, Ray Porter, other mm. one. Singularity. The singularity trap. Interesting. And it's got Ray Porter doing it again. So I'll definitely be giving that a go. Yeah, I might have I to do that one next. Trap that it's a singularity. The last, the last time when I finished, because I've finished all three of those Brand, Brandon Sanderson's now. Oh, I need to do 55 hours me? each. Is that yeah, I was just going to say, how many hours? hours is that? It's 55 hours in an audio book. <laughs> so it's Brent. So how, what's, what's it called? Way of Kings, I think, is the first yeah. one. Okay, I'm fi- are we finished? Oh, yeah, we probably, I think so. we I think, probably I still think, could say goodbye to our audience. Anyone, if anyone's yeah. still watching. For the, like, three hours later. Watching. We probably got there. We did three books. <laughs> so Bye, Internet. Bye. Bye.